All right. We are live, as they say. For some reason, <laughs> it must have given you the control. I'm a control freak. What can I say? Lead heads, we are back with another episode of the Talking Lead Podcast. As you are listening to this, uh, this will be episode 393. So if you haven't had an opportunity, make sure you go back and check out our previous episode, which would have been the Talking Lead AK Corner, Season 3, Episode 4, where we talk Kalashna Smithing. We talk about uh, some of the some of the finer points of gunsmithing with the AK-47, some customization tips and tricks with our friends over at M13 with John Holton, and of course my consummate co-host on the AK Corner for the past two years, Brian Keeney with Occam Defense Solutions. Uh, and then we also you know also get into your uh, your questions there on social media. I make a post pretty much every episode uh, so you guys can hit our our guest with questions. And that's no different than this episode, where we're going to be talking about survival food, backpacking food, um, long-term storage food. I don't know the the actual term, uh, but we'll get we'll get our guest to do that. Uh, joining us today, welcome in Eric Christensen with Survival. Nope, Nutrient Survival. I'll get it right. <laughs> I've got cheat notes right here all over my head too. You know, I could have just looked up there. <laughs> I like that. That's, that's a good looking background. Yeah, this is something that I found new on Skype where you can like change your background. So it's kind of cool um, that I can do this. <laughs> and since I started doing videos again uh, for our YouTube channel and our visually pleased listeners, um, it kind of it kind of comes in cool. So welcome cool. in, Eric. I appreciate you uh, joining us today, and I'm really excited about our topic today because uh, we have been talking. Um, along the lines of being prepared and prepping and, you know, things like that. I know a lot of our listeners are, you know, I, some people don't like the term preppers, but you know, I think yeah. it's, I think, I don't think there's anything wrong with the term. I don't think it's a derogatory term at all. I think that TV show just kind of ruined it for, you know, the, the real preppers. It made them out to be cuckoo, uh, you know, loco people. <laughs> yeah. Doomsday preppers. I, I love that show. I mean, it's, it's a lot a of great fun. show. Yeah. Yeah. entertainment for sure but uh you're you're right a uh, little bit of a stigma i think because of that show some of those people are um definitely eccentric i would i would say eccentric yes <laughs> are we all in special ways it they kind of looks this. like you're in a bomb shelter there uh with yeah. your with your uh 360 days of of food storage you like you like my set? It's pretty nice, huh? I do. I like that. That's, that's really I know where I'm coming. I'll tell you that. I got a whole warehouse full of this stuff, so I'm, <laughs> I'm You know where the good stuff's at, right? I do. Survive and thrive. Survive and thrive, man. I like that. Is that is that y'all's motto? It is actually it is not. Um, our motto is feed your freedom. Feed your you freedom. Look- Ooh. Feed your freedom. Now you've got those that art behind you. It says become exceptional, but we are we are uh, we're doing some work right now around our brand, and we're really excited about this idea of feed your freedom because for a lot of you know a lot of reasons. Um, obviously, it speaks to some of the values that we hold dear, and freedom being central to that. And we're obviously a food, and uh, and what we believe with with um, with kind of our core you know idea here. Is that if you give your body what it needs, uh, you know, a nutrient dense diet specifically, if you give your body what it needs, it can allow you to do many, many things that without that you wouldn't be able to do. You know, it, it defend your body, uh, keep you, keep your immune system strong. You can heal yourself a little bit more naturally and fully, and, and you can perform better. A stronger we'll body is harder to kill. Yeah, it is. It is. So that's that's our little our little deal. And you know, so much of the food that is out there, including a lot of other um, emergency foods, and I won't try to badmouth too much of them today. But um, but you know, it, it's just empty calories. And so that's the other thing that versus ultra processed food or processed food. Yeah. You know, you can you can break that uh, that addiction that that bondage that you have with some of those foods that we all love just because food marketers and scientists yeah. have 
figured out what we love to eat. Those damn marketers. Uh, I made a post yeah. on well, Instagram uh, the other day it uh, sparked a lot of a lot more controversy than I was intending. Uh, but you know, back in the day, the you know, for cigarettes and asbestos and you know some some of these things that they found that that really uh, are harmful to us today. Uh, you know, they were really pushing and promoting those things as being, you know, the great, the great stuff of the day. And, uh, <laughs> unfortunately they weren't, and they knew it. The science was there to prove different, yeah. but, uh, anyway, yeah. uh, it's yeah, no th- those damn marketers, I tell you, it's all about the, the almighty dollar I know there. Well. I know them well, Marty. Come on. Uh, but we first, we've got to thank the sponsors of our show, uh, Eric, so, the, yeah. the people that make this possible each and every episode. Uh, is one of our listeners. So thank our listeners for uh, taking the time to tune in each and every week and, and check us out. Uh, but as you're doing that, please go and support those that make it possible, like Seal One, uh, makers of a fine uh, CLP product. It's uh, bio-friendly, uh, green-engineered, made in the USA, SealOne.net. Uh, and the great thing about their product is one product does it all. It cleans, protects, uh, and lubricates, and just specifically firearms, but you can use this for pretty much anything um, that you want. You can use it on your, your automobile. You can use it on your marine items, your boats, your uh, fishing gear, your archery gear. Uh, so it's very versatile. But what's great about it is there are several different delivery systems uh, that they offer, and uh, I got to turn my backdrop off because it's it's impeding our video. Yeah. For this stuff, you, let's do this. You, like a, an invisible man, every now and then, it's it's interesting. I think it's just the the cameras trying to figure out what's what's real and what's not. I'm, and, screw, uh, I'm screwing with the. There it is. So there's the seal one. You can see it now. So nice, seal one. Nice. Uh, they've got these packs where you can get uh, all the cleaning pro- uh, products that you need, the, the towels, the brushes, um, the, the pads, um, and then three different delivery systems with it. Or you can go and buy them each separately. They've even got an aerosol that you can can use. And they're going to take care of you leadheads with a discount code. It's uh, leadhead, and you're going to get 25% off at seal1.net. Wow. So go show them some love. Nice. Myself included. I need a refill. You need a refill? So, well, I could probably hook you up with some of this, Eric. So we'll get your your uh, shipping address at, at when we get done, and I'll make sure we get you some of this. I'm going go to I'm gonna go to their website and, and, and grab it, so for sure. Okay, awesome. Good deal. Uh, and then, of course, uh, Mission First Tactical for uh, these awesome talking lead logo dump trays that we've got you can go there get your dump trays your tactical wallets um and these are great for smithing also so for you gunsmithers out there that like to tinker and uh, work and clean your guns you can put your parts in these and um brian has been testing them out i've been testing them out with different kind of cleaning solutions and solvents of course seal one is perfectly safe on this and it doesn't uh, affect the ink that's on here these are ink injected so this doesn't scratch off that uh, the logos that you get on there will stay on there. And they've got several different uh, logoed ones, and you can even put your own custom logo on there. Uh, they will even do it on their magazines. So your 30-round magazines, Mission First Tactical magazines, we've got the Leadhead Brigade on this one. Uh, nice. You, you can go and get those at Mission First Tactical, uh, or you can get your own cool logo on there. You can get them without a logo. And they've even got windowed magazines uh, as well. These are really good magazines. I've been using these for several years now. I like them. I like them a lot. And then, of course, uh, I don't know if you can see my shirt, but this is the Talking Lead logo T-shirt. This is our I classic know. logo. Love it. And you can get these at 1776 United. And uh, James over there has set up a lead head discount code and i set my phone in there i have to go oh here's my phone he just got us a new discount code so <laughs> i've got to i've got to see what it is here stand by i wasn't prepared for this one he doesn't normally give discounts so this is going to be awesome for you lead heads you can get this you can get our lead head brigade logo t-shirts patches at 1776 united 
And uh, you guys got to go show him some support, too, because Facebook uh, shut him down not too wow. long ago. They, they Just because he's 1776 United, they were banning all hashtag 1776 United or anything that had 1776 in it because apparently Facebook and Instagram don't like freedom. Oh, my God. Right? That's insane. <laughs> what is so offensive about that? 1776 United. That's that's insane. Um, American Pride, I guess. The, they're against American Pride. Um, they don't they don't like it for some reason. I don't get it. But I'll I'll verify that and get the the new code out to you, Leadheads. It's new. Okay, Leadheads. Sorry for the brain fart. The code for 1776United.com is Talking Lead. That's talking lead, all lowercase, one word, T A L K I N G L E A D, and you're going to get a big fat 20% off at 1776 United on any of their products. Uh, but we hope you use that on our products, the talking lead logo t shirts, the Leadhead Brigade, and Leadhead Brigade patches. Go take advantage of it, Leadheads. It's awesome. 1776 United. And then, of course, Keltec, KeltecWeapons.com. Uh, big news from Caltech. We are going to be at their booth for NRA coming up in September. We just uh, made that official. They're going to be <clears> hosting <throat> the lead quarters at the, uh, the NRA. So the official lead quarters is going to be Caltech this year. That's awesome. Yeah. So are you going to be at SHOT Show? Or not SHOT Show, but uh, NRA? NRA in September. It is on the agenda. I tell you that the first one we're going to go to is the outdoor... Uh, retail uh, show up in uh, Colorado. I think it's in August. Now that everything's opening back up, which is great. Um, I mean, they're swearing up and down. They're going to have it. Shouldn't be canceled. The 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 COVID uh, shouldn't yeah. shouldn't be affecting. It was supposed to have been here uh, last year in oh, Nashville. Really? Yeah, and then of course COVID shut everything down, and we couldn't have it. So. Yep. Uh, glad to, glad things are opening and people are starting to have their events again. So talk about the one that you're going to. Where is it at? It's in Colorado, up in uh, Denver. It's called the Outdoor Retail Show. And it's a big show. I, I've been there a couple times back in my other days. Um, but uh, but it's a great, it's a selling show more than a consumer show, mm -hmm. right? More of a or, buyer's kind of thing. Yeah, exactly. So that's kind of what we're, our deal is right now, trying to get our product in more doors so people can buy it wherever they are. Um, but of course we like when they're on the website too. Well, you know, that e-commerce, it's kind of the, the wave of the future. I hear it's going to really take off one day. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I think you're on something there. We should probably look into that. You guys are ahead of the curve, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Trendsetters. <laughs> Very good. Uh, so we're going to find out more about Eric and, nutrient survival and all the cool uh, food that they have and that I've been trying out too. So I've got, I've got some feedback, actual good feedback for you leadheads. But before we do that, you know what I hear rolling in, Eric? Thunder. What do you hear? That's a, that's a, that's a train. You think it's thunder, but that's the talking lead jack wagon train rolling in. Shoot. Uh, engineered by none other than, than Gunny himself. So Gunny, cool. bring, bring that train in. Hey, Ralph, Semper Fi, do or die, hold them high at 8th and I. It is time for the Talking Lead Jack Wagon of the Week, so brace yourself, baby. The uh, train has stationed, and we're not going to spend a lot of time on Jack Wagons, but we've got a, a couple that we want to, to talk about. And then, of course, we've got some heroes that we want to honor for the uh, Talking Lead uh, Leadhead Brigade Heroes. They get a ride on Lead Force One, Eric. Nice. So we, nice. We really take care of our heroes here, and it's it's piloted by the ghost of Charlton Heston. Oh, one of my favorites. <laughs> I just Ten Commandments literally this past weekend with my my family. Did so you I really? love. Yeah, he's one of my favorites. Planet of the Apes and Planet ben of the Hur Apes. Are yeah. you kidding me? He is absolutely one of my all time favorites. So very good, very good. So we're in good company here. You're gonna take care of us. So um, I like to defer to my guest um, first on our, our trains and planes segment here. So who is your jack wagon this week, Eric? I have completely let you down because I have been in meetings all morning. I did not know I needed to be part of this jack wagon segment. So you may need to. <laughs> <laughs> I 
So there you go. There's your jack wagon right there, the meetings. <laughs> yeah, damn meetings. You know, someone's got to work for a living still, Marty. Come on. I understand, man. I understand. But you're doing what you love for a living, and that's what matters, right? Yeah, you bet. You bet. Absolutely. So I'll, I'll kick us off here. I'll start us off. I was uh, perusing through this, and it would have been appropriate for the AK corner, but I don't do the planes and trains on the AK corner. Uh, so I saved this for, for this show. So this happens in Louisiana. So Dateline, Louisiana. Headline is police struggle to get loaded AK-47 out of 10-year-old's hands in chaotic overdose investigation. And this is, uh, I'm reading this from the New York Daily News. I'm sure if you just Google this, it'll come up probably a thousand different uh, places. So an overdose dose call turned in a frightening situation for police in Louisiana after cops found a 10-year-old boy holding a loaded AK-47 rifle Saturday night. I'm surprised that they're not calling it a deadly assault rifle. Deadly assault by a 10-year-old, right. An AK-47 deadly assault rifle. The uh -huh. incident happened after police were called to a Dairy Queen parking lot in the city of Crowley to investigate a suspected drug overdose inside a car. Uh, cops found the man in the driver's seat, uh, provided medical attention to him, and asked his wife if they could search the vehicle. The woman gave them permission and admitted there were narcotics and guns in the car. Uh, wow. As cops began searching the vehicle, they found cocaine, also known as cocaine. Uh, okay. If you ever watch uh, Walk Hard, you ever watch that movie? <laughs> yeah, I have. With the... Uh, Dewey, is that, yeah, <laughs> He's like, Dewey, don't you, don't you get on that cocaine? <laughs> a uh, fentanyl, two nine millimeter handguns, and an AK forty seven, all gosh. of which were in reach of four, in quote, small children. Police wow. said in a news release. In fact, one of the kids was holding the loaded rifle in his lap and initially refused to hand it to the officers, authorities said. The child, wow. of course, didn't want to give it up, probably to protect his family or didn't know exactly what was going on. Crowley Police Chief Jimmy Brassard told local news, It's a very scary scene for a child, he said. The officer spoke to him, spoke to him calmly, and tried mm -hmm. to gain his trust in everything. It wasn't a huge struggle, but he still wasn't letting it go freely. Yeah. The 10-year-old eventually handed over the weapon, which had its safety mode turned off. Its safety mode turned off, <laughs> averting a potential tragedy. If one thing would have gone wrong, this is quotes right here, if one thing would have gone wrong and that weapon would have discharged, everyone inside that vehicle and near the scene would have been killed, Broussard told the station. God. So if that gun would have discharged a semi-automatic, which I'm sure it probably was, even if it was semi-auto, everyone yeah. in the car and around it would have been dead just because it, it, it went off. That magic bullet. It is, I mean, no laughing matter for sure. It's just a tragedy that that is a real situation. You know, it's just... It's just sad. Uh, obviously, I'm very thankful that, um, you know, they had great parents. And that's probably more of a anomaly versus the norm. I don't know, yeah. down in Luzang. But <laughs> I tell you, it's just, it's just a sad, it's sad state of affairs, right? I think probably more gun laws would have uh, helped, helped that situation, don't you think? Oh, of, more, of course, of course, yeah. They need to make fingers uh, illegal. But anyway, I think the child probably knew more about that AK-47 than the arresting officers knew about it. It was probably in safer hands with him probably. than, than uh, the really? police officers taking it away from him. Yeah. Can you imagine if that thing had discharged, there, there would have been probably 10, 15 people on the ground. Well, I think, that. I think probably you and I would have been injured from that as well. I'm out here in Reno. Are you kidding? Right. Probably. Yeah. I mean, you never know. <laughs> That's the next thing to come, right? It's those magic bullets, you know. Uh, Your definition of surrounding area. Uh, for sure. <laughs> yeah. Jim. But yes, it uh, definitely uh, not a great situation uh, overall, you know, story, but 
for the jack yeah. wagon train, just that one statement right there by the uh, Louisiana sheriff or whatever he is, um, was, just deserves a ride on the jack wagon train. Definitely. Tell me, it had to be a deputy. It had to be like a deputy third class or something, right? That has, wow, I just lost my lights. <laughs> Uh oh! Uh, it's time for that survival food. <laughs> oh, you know what? It's okay. It's okay. The lights went out, but I have my other fancy lights up, so I'm all right. There you go. You get your backup. Uh, actually, you know, he Broussard is. It says Police Chief Jimmy uh, Broussard. So that was the God. police chief. Has the guy ever shot a 47 before? <clears throat> I don't think he's ever shot a gun before. So. I don't know. It's pretty sad. But uh, anyway, that's that's my jack wagon. Uh, for this episode, did you think of it? Did anything come to mind that you wanted to jack wagonery? Did you, you know, somebody take your parking place at Walmart or anything? <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, well, no. I mean, I don't have anything as ridiculous as that. That's for sure. I'll, I'll, I'll have to, I'll have to keep thinking about it. Um, you caught me in a moment of uh, where I did not catch off my guard. I did. I, you know, I'll be fair. You, you didn't. You weren't prepared for this segment, and that was my fault. I apologize. I was not, but I'm sure something ridiculous will pop into my mind here uh, <laughs> shortly. We'll, we will see. Let's we will see, see if... Um... Oh, I have one for you. Okay. okay. I knew you. This I knew is, it would come to you. This is, this is a while back, but it, it is one of the most ridiculous things that I've heard of. Okay, Nevada. Um, Nevada Athletic uh, Commission, if you call it that. No, because that, that takes you to like boxing and whatnot. This is like the amateur for high school athletics. Uh-huh. Okay. So, and I don't have an article to read, so, but I'll have to detail the story a little bit. So, you know, Governor Sisolik trying to figure out how we're going to open up all the different, uh, you know, sporting for high school kids that are, you know, really looking to get a little exposure, right? So they, they get looked at by some of these colleges and universities and, and uh, as well as just you know, participating in, in high school athletics. I mean, what a great experience, right? Everyone should have Absolutely. an opportunity. Absolutely, yeah. So I used to wrestle. I wrestled, played football, did some soccer stuff, and but wrestling was kind of my thing. So this is why it kind of piqued my interest. So they came out with the rules for COVID protocols for wrestlers. For wrestlers? Okay. For wrestlers. Are you ready for this? This is... <laughs> This is from our, our great governor's office, I believe. The great so minds the, of our leaders. <laughs> I tell you. And, and so here's the, the protocol is that before the match, you know, the, what you do as a wrestler is you always shake hands, uh-huh. right? You always shake hands and then you take your spot and then it's wrestle. And, and so what they did to, to enforce COVID protocols and make sure no one got sick and whatnot is there's no shaking hands anymore. Okay. But so you just take your position and then you wrestle. So they took out the shaking hands part, but everything else is okay, I guess. So the swapping, um, swapping sweat and saliva. I mean, and it's like blood. the most physical contact mm-hmm. sport out there. I mean, really? Do they make them wear masks? They there were no masks, thank God. But but it's just the ridiculousness of okay, wrestle. You've got your hot, sweaty bodies got them in headlocks and half nelsons and cradles and all kinds of other <laughs> you know intimate wrestling positions but heaven forbid you shake hands ahead of time and and afterwards as well there's no shaking hands afterwards and no I, no, and, I, no no sportsmanship and there's no sportsmanship so i think the ref actually points to the corner doesn't even lift the wrestler's hand so anymore good sportsmanship leads to contracting covid <laughs> <laughs> but everything in between does it so that's that my, Governor Sisolik would have to ride the the, yes. the uh, uh, what do you call it the, the jack, jack wagon, wagon train like, the jack wagon he'd have to ride the jack wagon yeah the jack wagon train yeah how'd I do so right, well is that better that's perfect man I mean All right. you you just encapsulated the whole concept of what a jack wagon is right there yeah uh, I love that and on that on that note you know um, this made me think of the the MLB. Pulling out the yeah. was it the All Star game from from Dallas? Is that where it was? I think it was Atlanta, wasn't it? Or Atlanta, yes, Atlanta, because Atlanta changed their voting laws, right? Because Atlanta changed improved their voting laws, mm-hmm. which their voting laws are still nothing compared to what California's are. <laughs> um, MLB 
decides yeah. that they're going to pull out. They're caving to their sponsors, basically. I think some of their sponsors were, were, were behind it. But the yeah. fact that they caved uh, and pulled up and moved, I think they were moving it to maybe to Texas or something. I don't know. but Probably. Um, Probably. They are jack wagons for that. So I'll yeah, and, and what that, that whole thing though, and I, I read it, you know, and it's, I think it's a, you know, to your point, a little politically charged, but it's, it yeah. is. Uh, my understanding was it was just about making sure that folks were who they were or proclaimed to be. Right. It was about evidence of um, your registration belonging to you. Um, and I, I, my interpretation wasn't it wasn't anything more than that. It was just show us some ID, basically. Right. Which is it's supposed to be that way anyway. You have to prove you are who you are before you vote. I mean, that's it's always been that way since I've done it. So anyway, yes, um, jack wagons right there. <laughs> uh, lead heads, sure if you've got jack wagons that you want to nominate for the Talking Lead Jack Wagon Train, send those to me, talkinglead at gmail dot com. And uh, we will read them on the air and give you credit for those uh, as best we can. Uh, this comes from Joe, Leadhead Joe. And uh, I don't know that this is a jack wagon. Let's see what it says. It says, Dear Talking Lead, I just found your podcast and tried to write you from your site, but I don't know if you got it. Yeah, don't send me messages through the website because I don't, uh, I don't usually see those. So if you want to get in touch with me, talkinglead at gmail.com. Uh, some people reach out through the messages on social media, which uh, I, I check those periodically. But the best way is to shoot me an email, talking mm-hmm. about gmail.com. It says, anyway, I enjoyed your show, TLP338, and I'll be listening to more of them. Uh, 338 was... That's a while ago. Yeah, that's been a long time ago. It says 336 was back during shots. We had uh, the AK Corner. Wow, I don't, let's see what 338 was. That's that's reaching back. Let's type that in. I have to type it in, do a search on it. Let's see if that comes. And that's a, a thing you can do, too, on the website. So if you're looking for, like, a topic or a guest, you can go to our website under Leadcast, do a search, and type in a name or a company or, or something like that, and uh, it'll come up. There it is, TLP338. We talked about the sub-6 pound 308 rifles, electronic triggers, and the Spectrum DF. Uh, so that was during SHOT Show. Nice. Uh, let's see what he says. He goes goes on to say, uh, you ask people to let you know where to go for our news. Uh, we go to Gateway Pundit. Oh, okay. I, I read this one a couple episodes back. Uh, Big League Politics, Town Hall, and uh, CitizenFreePress.com for politics. Um, so, Eric, what I, what I started doing this year is going through and just kind of perusing the headlines just to see what the headlines are you know what the the media is trying to push out there you know down our throats Uh, because last year it was nothing but covid and you know we're going to die from covid if you don't you know cover your face if you shake hands with somebody you know don't for god's sakes don't you know be in the same vicinity as somebody else um just just fear and uh you know all that and then trump all the bad stuff trump's doing so yep. how bad Trump is in COVID and we're going to die. Um, this year, yeah, I've been, I've been reading some headlines. Uh, so what I'll do is I just kind of go, and I, I use DuckDuckGo instead of Google for, for uh-huh. my, my search engine. And I just type in, type in news and I hit search. And, um, and it just goes through and it brings up Fox, CNN, NBC, you know, all, all the big ones there. And then they've got... Uh, some of their stuff. So, shooting occurs near Maryland police barracks. This was ABC News four minutes ago. Really? Wow. Yeah, four minutes ago. Shooting occurs near Maryland State Police barracks. Why do they have barracks? Is there something going on in Maryland? Uh, <laughs> I they call it barracks. I used to live in Maryland. Actually, still still have a place out there. And, uh, yeah, they call just the police stations barracks. Barracks? Okay. A trooper was involved in a shooting near Maryland State Police Barracks Tuesday, authorities said. Maryland State Police Sergeant Casey Rue said investigations are, investigators are responding to a trooper-involved shooting. Um, and that's that's all they've got right now because this is just broke, apparently. Where was it in Maryland? Do you know? Um, 
I clicked off of it and it changed my headline. <laughs> Sir, but no biggie. I, don't I was know. just curious. I don't know. Uh, right. Ex officer <clears throat> appeals twenty year sentence for killing black men or black man. Skeletal remains identified as man who disappeared in nineteen seventy nine. That's a headline. Can wow. you help detectives find these two men wanted in Miami County? That's a Yahoo News. Uh, let's see what else they got here. Johnson & Johnson COVID-19 vaccinations at Aurora. Uh, Elgin sites postponed after something, a Chicago tribute. Defense begins case in ex-cops trial over Floyd's death. So the the Derek Chauvin uh, thing that's big right now that's that's in the news been in the news for a while. Fox News we'll go to Fox see what Fox has got. Stepping down, Minnesota City Police Chief and Officer who shot Dante Wright resign. So it looks like we're getting a officer involved shooting theme uh, going mm. on going on this week. Seems that way. So the the media is wanting our attention focused there for some reason. And and you probably know this just as as well as you. You've got a military background, a former Army Ranger. Um, that they they try to get your attention over here while they're doing something else over here. <laughs> you know, watch my left hand while my right hand is doing the trickery. That's right. That's right. Kind of stuff. So let's see. Just a couple more headlines here on Fox. Bipartisan blowback over. Uh, T T L A I B. How do you say her name? That uh, Tal Talib. Biden doesn't agree with Talib call for ending uh, policing. Yeah. She's one of the. What do they call them? The, those. Oh, that man. women group there in in yeah whatever it, the tribe. You no, know, yeah, exactly. You're onto it. Oh yeah. my gosh, just brain brain fart right now um leadheads know who we're talking about aoc's in there yes and, yeah right, all, all that guys. yeah no you got me on that one golf legend son disciplined after causing stir dur during the masters uh oh is the master getting redneck <laughs> <laughs> they're allowing uh, alcohol out on the the course now navy confirms capturing footage of pyramid shaped ufos Orbs above ship. Now, see, that's the kind of news I want to hear about. That's that sounds like it's National Enquirer material there. See, I think that's that's what all the all right, look at this hand, look at all the police shootings and stuff going on with police because the aliens are over here. Don't look at the aliens. That's it. <laughs> Do you believe in UFOs? Oh hell yeah! Are you kidding me? Okay, all right. I mean, this universe is is too big to, uh, to to you know to believe that like we're the only things out there. Now, I am a Christian, and I believe that we are created in sure. you know, God's image, all that stuff. So I don't know what those aliens look like, but yeah. I know it's a big, it's a big universe out there. And uh, well, God could I, have created other, uh, you know, Earths and and whatnot too. So I'm right. a Christian as well, but I also believe that there is other life out there. I yeah. don't know that that it's made it here yet, as far as actual intelligent alien life. Now, maybe something made it on a meteor or something like that and survived, and we've got some bacteria or something like that, alien, uh, that kind of stuff. But as far as the the intelligent UFOs and stuff like that, I don't really believe that. But I do believe that there's there's other life out there. Yeah, I just think yeah. we're too far spread apart, even for somebody who might be you know, a million years ahead in technology than us to, to actually achieve the, the time bending to be able to travel that far. It's, it's so it's amazing. You know, I think it's a, uh, it's a really interesting subject. And I think a little bit of what's your definition of an alien too. Is it a non-human form? Yes. Or, or being? not from earth. Didn't, didn't not, evolve. Not at, from earth. Yeah. Didn't evolve on earth. If if my dad was on here, he'd start talking to you about the Nephilim. Uh, the, these are the giants that used to roam the earth back in the early, early, like, biblical days. Okay. You the know, Titans? Like, Would this be the Titans? Well, I, I think it's similar, but I think they were called the Nephilim. And basically, it's uh, it's angels that uh, came down and 
um, swooped up human women and had had giants. And the the, the story kind of goes that a lot of the um, heroes of yesteryear, you know, um, legends that that were that were made, uh-huh. Achilles, Hercules, and uh-huh. you know the type were offspring of of the, uh, the giants, angels. The angels. Uh-huh. The, and even you know I've been to Machu Picchu, and it is magnificent work. I mean, it's unbelievable to 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 be able to think that humans built some of this stuff. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, and the size of these stones and the places that they are. I mean, I think it's more magnificent. I haven't been to Egypt, but it sounds like it's more magnificent. Like the pyramids. Than Egypt, right? Than the pyramids and some of the things that you see out there. But anyway, you know, my my dad, he'll tell you that the giants built that. Easter Island, same thing, right? Just how they move these these gigantic, map. multi-ton boulders, yeah. And it's beautiful work too. The craftsmanship is amazing. It's just amazing. So, anyway, I don't know. Uh, kind of living the here and now, but it's kind of interesting to think about for sure. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So they might are, have been. Yeah. So there's are there's are some Fox News headlines. Let's go to CNN real quick and just kind of get a. Uh, counter because that's they're supposed to be bipolar, bipolar opposites, right? It's Fox and CNN, which I think they're really owned by the same person uh, or group of people. Defense expert witness says Chauvin's oh. actions were justified. That's a update. Mayor says Officer Kim Porter has submitted her resignation from the Brooklyn, Brooklyn Center Police Department along with Chief Tim Gannon. Um, don't really know what's going on there. Must have been a another shooting officer involved shooting. But again, we're getting police, you know, bad police press here, showing our right. our our blue and bad light. Uh, the fatal obstacles for Chauvin's defense. Two suspects arrested in the disappearance of Kristen Smart. Family and sources say. So uh, kidnap victim there. News and Buzz, Virginia AG investigates possible pattern of misconduct at Windsor PD. I mean, who, who we're getting, this is our there theme this week. <clears throat> um, state scramble to halt Johnson and Johnson vaccinations after CDC and FDA recommend pause. I want to ask you this. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, you know, the, the getting the vaccination kind of thing, you know, they've, they've been pushing that you know, from, from day one and, uh, yeah. basically forcing people because there are, there are companies and events that are, Hey, if you haven't had this vaccination, then, you know, you can't come to this ball game or you can't watch this, um, this concert, or you can't work here in order to work here. You have to take this vaccination. I, um, I don't, you know, I don't think they should be able to, to do that, to force people to put something in their bodies that they have no idea what it is for one. But just the fact that putting in something in my body that I don't want in my body, and you're going to punish me for that. Yeah. Well, no, another another really crazy you know time. I, I I don't know what it was like back in the days of polio, but I assume there was a massive uh, undertaking to get everybody vaccinated so that you know the population would would reach herd immunity. I personally. You know, I don't have the, the vaccine, and um, you know, for, for 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 a number of reasons, um, a lot of folks here at the at the plant have gone and, and gotten it because, as a food manufacturer, uh, you know, we have preference for our employees to be able to get the vaccine. So that's that's good to keep. You know, it's contagious. It's real, right? So it's it's all that. But I think you're absolutely right to force somebody to put something in their body that they may not want in their body and then to ask them to walk around with a piece of paper declaring such. Mm-hmm. I mean, I can't, uh, even uh, airlines. Uh, um, I can't bigger definition of tyranny than that. I mean, really Southwest, um, for people flying into Chicago from certain areas, they require proof one, either of a test or that you've had the vaccination, yeah. you know, a test showing that you you're clear and don't have it. Or a vaccination, and it's just for people flying into Chicago from certain areas, from certain states, not every state. Really? Wow. Yeah. What? What's? That's, what's the reasoning behind that? 
It makes no sense. No, it, uh, it makes no sense at all. No. You know, and here's a ridiculous thing. I've traveled a lot during the, the COVID year, mm-hmm. the, the year of COVID, and um, I've, you know, man, I, I don't know, I've probably put on 10,000, 15,000 miles flying back and forth and staying in hotels and moving across the country and that sort of thing. And you know what? Uh, now it's, it's, it used to be six feet apart, right? Everybody's six feet apart. And when I when I I was one of the first guys probably to jump on an airplane back when this whole thing broke, mm-hmm. and I was the only guy, literally the only guy on the on the plane, and everyone was freaking out and very concerned about it. And now, of course, you know you're packed back in there like sardines. So up until the point, hey, keep your distance, keep your distance, and then you get on the plane, and it's like, uh, is that my armrest or yours? Right, right. <laughs> you no, know? and this mask isn't going to help anything except suffocate me. It's it's ridiculous, but anyway, I mean, again, it's real. It's contagious. I'm not disputing any of that, it, but the, the way dis- that we I dispute uh, the severity of it. I, I definitely dispute the severity of it and the fact that what happened to the flu. Where's the flu? Well, it's it's it's, it's more as I as I like to say, it's more contagious than the flu. But the severity, to your point, is no worse than the flu. Yeah, if if any, but. It's, but. It's, Anyway, I wanted to to bring that up. So there's there's some more jack wagons right there. Companies or yeah. people that that are requiring you to show proof of a test or vaccination. They can mm-hmm. they can ride under the train as far as I'm concerned. That's that's a good one. Yeah. So that's it for the jack wagons. There's there's your headlines. We kind of got a, a theme of the headlines for for this week right off the bat. So sometimes it takes us a little longer to to read between the lines, but I, I think we nailed it this time. I think you did. Yeah. All right. Let's uh, let's counter this. Let's get some good news in. Let's talk about some heroes. Let's talk about some some people, organizations that we want to to recognize as doing some good in our world, in our in our universe. Maybe there's some aliens out there or something. Yeah. That, that yeah. Are doing some good. Right. What about you? You got some heroes. You got a hero. Uh, I, I you know I think one of the one of the heroes. That uh, has just announced his retirement for me is Drew Brees. Oh, uh, okay. Right? Again, he's a guy that just stood up for his beliefs and you know had the, the potential to be villainized and and victimized because of um, him him holding his you know holding his ground. And uh, so it's going to be tough seeing him <clears throat> him him uh, leave the the scenes. You talked about New Orleans earlier. New Orleans, yeah. He's New Orleans. He's just been such an icon down there, and uh, just a ton of respect for that guy. So, I guess he's he's kind of one of my heroes that comes to mind for me off the bat. Um, I'm, how about you? What are you thinking? So, uh, and that, that's a good one. I like yours. Uh, Drew Brees, definitely. Um, yeah. Mine is going to uh, Glenn Fleming. And for you, um, I guess, older generation like myself, if you ever watched the show Sons of Guns, I think it was on Discovery Channel or History Channel or something like that. It was the Red Jacket Firearms crew. Um, you had... Uh, you know, Vince and you had Joe, you know, Joe Moe's been on the show uh, a lot, him and Charlie, we have them on there now, Ackless Defense, uh, but some of the other the guys that were on it, Glenn Fleming and, uh, you know, Vince have gone on to do their own things as well. And Glenn Fleming, he's Flem Gunner on Instagram. He made a post uh, and it says, I'll read it. It says, working on machine guns and hanging out with hot chicks is cool and all, but it does kind of get mundane after a while. And it says, this, however, I would gladly do every day. And he's got a video there of, of what we're talking about. Uh, and again, it's at Flim Gunner on Instagram. You can go look at this video. It says, this is Marky. He was dealt an extremely shitty hand, but he is taking it in stride. And I salute him for it. He wanted to shoot a gun as he never has, and I was able to make it happen and in full auto to boot. Things happen, break, breakups, financial BS, life, death, it happens to everyone, and there's nothing you can do to stop it, but you have to press on, deal with it, and overcome. You can wallow in self-pity and play the woe-is-me game card, but that's no way to uh, live, man. 
Yeah. Edit, I edited that a little bit. He, he put the big F word in there, dropped the F bomb, <laughs> which we say that on this this show. We I don't filter my guests. Uh, so right. I'm fortunate to work at a place. Um, let me scroll down. Where the people at drive tanks care about stuff and back it up and what they say. It makes a job have heart. Y'all have a fantastic day. So it's this kid who um, looks like he's confined, confined to a wheelchair. Been in, looks like he's been in a wheelchair all his life, surgeries and stuff like that. But, you know, he's given him an opportunity to do something that, uh, you know, he's wanted to do. And uh, he's doing a full auto and he, he's doing a bang up job. He's shooting it better than I could. That's for sure. Uh, <laughs> So, Flem, uh, Glenn Fleming, you have made the Talking Lead, Leadhead Brigade heroes. So, you get a ride on Lead Force One. Right. So, that's all I've got as far as the, the heroes go. I don't think there's like any big uh, political heroes that I have heard about lately. I'm probably forgetting about them. But uh, yeah. you Leadheads, if you've got some, you're like, oh, why don't you put such and such on? Shoot me an email, talkingleadgmail.com. Nominate your your lead head brigade heroes, and it doesn't have to be something current. It could be something in the past. You know, somebody who uh, you know we need to uh, revive their hero ness, uh, if you will, <laughs> their their heroic acts. Right. Um, and same thing with jack wagons. It's never too late to to put a jack wagon on the train. Um, you know, we put Hitler on not too long ago. One of you lead heads, like, hey, you put yeah, definitely. Yeah. He he definitely deserves that. <laughs> Yeah, I think he's still. They're still. He's tied to the back of the jack wagon train back there. Should be under the jack wagon train. Yeah, well, Hillary's under it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she takes up the whole underneath with her jack wagoniness. Yeah, yeah, I won't say anything. Man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, look! Somebody's calling me with a jack wagon right now from California. We'll shut them down. But that's it, unless you got anybody else uh, that you want to throw in there. No, there's, I, I don't, nobody's coming to mind right now for me. I, I apologize. I, I, I should have done some homework for no, you. No, that's fine. Uh, that's fine. That's perfect. Um, yeah. So we'll get, we'll get the uh, planes and trains out of here, and we want to talk nutrient survival with Eric now. So, Eric, tell us a little bit about your company nutrient survival and this is a, a subsidiary company of a, a larger company correct well we we are a we are a, a startup company uh, that is owned by an investor and it is part of a holding company so to that point yes we, we are uh, a, a company um, within a company, gotcha. so to speak. We're here to be yeah. educated, so educate us. <laughs> educate you. Educate. Yeah. Us. yeah. Uh, it's it's kind of interesting. I mean, it's an, it's a cool little story. That the idea of nutrient dense food, which is kind of at the, the heart of what we do, has been around for a little while. And in fact, if you look at the dietary guidelines, you know, there's a lot of talk about eating more nutrient dense foods because it's about how many nutrients per calorie. Uh, you get in your food, not empty calories, but ones that are doing good stuff for you. Mm -hmm. But um, but we sort of came up with this idea uh, uh, coming out of the the first massive hit of COVID. To tell you the truth, this company didn't exist a year ago um, in terms of nutrient survival. Uh -huh. And it's at that point, where people were just scrambling, looking for something, anything, you know, food wise that would get them through all the closures and the shutdowns and the food chain disruptions, nobody knew how long that stuff was going to last. And we had a, uh, we had a, a pretty cool thing here at the, at the company where we could take food and use real ingredients and mix the stuff together, add our nutrients and freeze dry it and make it available um, via mail order, right? E-commerce. Mm -hmm. And so that, this company sort of came out of COVID and, and birthed, uh, really what we are today. And we've got food, we've got beverages, drinks. You know, I think the food is probably the most uh, popular part of the lineup right now, but we have some pretty cool drinks like vitamin coffee and liquid nutrient. And we just launched a new thing called Immune Boost. It's vitamin all coffee, wait a minute. <laughs> yeah, vitamin coffee. Yeah, I've got I've got a lot of shameless plugs for you, but it, it no, comes- No, let's hear them. I mean, that's what we're here. Actually, we we want to learn more about this, so yeah. No, it was just named um, by Backpacker Magazine as the best 
camping coffee of 2021. Oh, so okay, we're pretty happy with that. They come in these little individual packets here. It's instant, okay. but it's loaded with uh, 13 vitamins. And so for you listeners that aren't watching this on the YouTube, he's holding up a packet. It looks like one of those uh, – um, like powdered flavored energy drinks that you put in your water uh, kind of packet right. kind of thing. So it's yep, real yep. compact, real easy yeah. to put in a uh, a backpack and store. And, you know, for That's a it. week, two weeks, you can get a lot of those in there. That's it. Drink yeah. a lot of coffee. I so, don't drink coffee, but. Uh, <laughs> really? No. Good. Never, never have. I, you know, I've tried it a couple of times, but uh, just, I don't like, I like the smell of it, like, when it's brewing, right, right right before it starts to brew, like when you put it in there, it's got that, I don't know, it's got a nice nice odor to it, but I just can't drink it. Yeah, no, it's good. It's good stuff. It's good stuff. But, I mean, the, the heart of our um, lineup is is food. Yeah. And we have trays. We have some breakfast things like cereals and oatmeal, and, uh, a couple of bars and cookies and things of that nature. And we, we, um, we sell them in the number 10 cans, which you see behind me, all these big number 10 cans, very popular yeah. for stocking up and having stuff on hand. And then we just came out with um, what we call singles, and we sent you some of this stuff, and you, and you yeah. got to show it at the beginning of the segment. But just these individual guys that you can throw in your rucksack or your mm-hmm. bug out bag, and uh, they're, they're great. great. Single serves and everything you need. Yeah, and I, I like I like that the fact that you don't have to buy one of those big, uh, you know, those big cans because this works perfect for now. The cans are great for long term storage, and we're going to talk about that. We're going to get into that. So, you know, you want to yeah. stock your shelves for, you know, a, a, a year to five years of or twenty five years. You know, we'll talk about that too of of good food storage. You know, those cans are the way to go. Nothing that you want to tap into immediately. But these uh, single packets are great for emergency situations uh, or if you're camping, backpacking, hiking uh, type Mm. scenarios where you can just, instead of having to open up one of those big cans, you can get these and you've got an instant nutritious meal uh, out of one of these packets right here. And they are loaded with vitamins and minerals and, you know, calories. You know, you need the calories when you're out there hiking and backpacking and working. Um, but yeah, I really enjoyed these. I, I had an opportunity to try, is it five per, per thing? All five of them. And it looks like you've got it set up to where it's like a, a day's meal. So you got breakfast, lunch, snack, dinner, kind of, kind of set up there. Um, so what we sent you was a sampler pack that has five of our varieties in there. And we actually have, we have six varieties that are in the singles right now. We're coming out with another six, but we wanted to start with our most popular flavors. And uh-huh. so you got a little little sampling of, of our entrees and a couple of the breakfast meals in there as well. Yeah. But uh, but like you said, it's you know, every single one of these packets is 25% of your daily value for nutrients. So technically speaking, you know you you have four of these and you get 100%. Many of the nutrients are over 100 or are, are over 25 percent. Yeah. So, you know, so you're getting a, you're getting everything that you need. Like vitamin six here, B6 is 35 percent. Niacin's 40 percent. Thiamin's 50. So, a lot of these things are over the uh, recommended value, and it's awesome stuff. I mean, think about it. You know, the question is in emergency situations or whatever. Are you are you ready? Are you prepared? And a lot of people think that has to do with uh, you know, generally food and water and maybe some defense and navigation and candles and flashlights and that sort of thing. But, you know, really, you think about it, the, the thing that you have to be most prepared is your body and your mind. Because yeah. without that, you know, you're... Everything you're up, else goes to crap, yeah. Without a paddle, right? Exactly. So it's super... We think our, our food, we know our food does that. There's a lot of science behind what nutrients do for you at a cellular level. Mm-hmm. And it, it's translated into all kinds of very cool benefits protecting your body and defending it from, you know, foreign invaders like, uh, you know, viruses and that sort of thing. And, like COVID? And, uh, <laughs> you helped me feel a little better. So a lot of cool stuff. Yeah, definitely. So, um, you know, you, you, got, you said you guys were just born last year. You know, this company was just, just started. Is, is this something that – was this your idea? Did you start this company? 
So I was able to, I, I'm the CEO of the company. Okay. Um, the, the lead in, the investor um, is very passionate about this space of nutrient dense food and what it can do for you. And he has been on this journey probably for about eight years. So this idea is brand new. We launched officially in July as Nutrient Survival. And so we've been going and, and learning it as we go and, and having a lot of fun doing it, getting better and better, coming out with new products and, and that sort of thing. But he, uh, it, he had the idea um, really coming out of COVID. Mm-hmm. You know, back when COVID, I was back in Maryland and he was looking for somebody that had a food and, and beverage background in marketing and also somebody that had a little bit of a mindset uh, like like I did, being a former army guy, uh, and needed me to take that hill. So that was that was kind of the idea. Now, did he did he engineer these? Um, did he come up with the the ingredients and the formula and all that? And if he did, how well, did how did he how did he decide on the um, I guess the ingredients and and then that kind of stuff? Well, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you, Marty. What's his the, background? The, <laughs> yeah, no, the short story is he's not, uh, he's a big idea guy, a strategy guy. Okay. And it's the power of nutrients and that people need nutrients in their diet to, to let us do naturally what our bodies and our minds should yeah, be able to do. Because a lot of these but type emergency foods or long time storage, they don't really have the, the new, they've got calories in them. They don't really right. have the, like you say, the, the vitamins and the minerals and things that your body needs and has to have to survive. Right. Yeah. No, you're 100% right. I mean, in fact, uh, we have 40 essential nutrients in every single meal. And there's a lot of really neat things that, uh, that, that we can talk about there. But you, know, you look at the other stuff that's out there, and it's all about calories. And unfortunately, they're empty calories. There's nothing really too good in there other than maybe um, energy, which is another name for calories. Mm-hmm. And and tend to be a little bit fatty and some sugars and that sort of thing. But th- there's no nutrients in there. In fact, you, you get more nutrition out of a Big Mac than you would out of some of the uh, other emergency foods that are out there on the market for you. Right. And we're just do that. We're, we're about great tasting, surprisingly awesome taste, I like to say, because people really don't know freeze-dried food in general. Mm-hmm. And that's what we do. We make freeze-dried food in those nutrients – uh, and, and allow that stuff to be on hand for up to 25 years. And you know, all you need is a little bit of water. It doesn't even have to be hot water. And you've got a meal right in front of you. Right. You add the hot water if you want a, a nice hot meal. Um, but I did. I, I added hot water to all mine except the uh, the granola cereal thing. I did I did yogurt and, and I tried it dry and I added uh, milk to it. So I tried it three different ways. And uh, it was tasty. You know, it was cocoa-y. I liked it. it. Well, it's like a lot of people tell us it tastes like cocoa cocoa puffs, and I, I agree. It tastes just like cocoa puffs. Kids love it. Uh, and no, it's it better than too. cocoa puffs. Um, yeah, it's, it's better than cocoa puffs. Yeah, I don't like cocoa puffs at all, um, so I wouldn't compare it to cocoa puffs. But it is it is good. It's um, it's like a oats grain kind of right. kind of thing. Now, are you guys like gluten um, aware with your with your stuff, or how's that work with these people who don't like gluten yeah we've got, we've got a couple flavors that are gluten free um, but it's not something that you know again it's it's uh, there are there's a percentage of the population that are very attuned to it and mm-hmm. do it from, um, a health standpoint and maybe a lifestyle standpoint sure but but a lot of our, our products because we use wheat um, are not gluten free um, we've got sure. a, a couple that are in every product, uh, you know, it's indicates whether or not it is or not like our, our, um, our home style scramble, um, uh, is, is gluten free because it doesn't have uh, wheat in it. It's my knowledge. Yeah. I liked it. It, it had a really good, uh, flavor to it. Now the, I'm trying to find it here. Where's it at? The scramble. It good there one. it is. Home style, home style. And that, that's the one I saved for last because it looked like yeah, it was going to be the, Best sellers. It looked like it was going to be the most tasty. Um, but this one is made with eggs, right? Yeah, no, it is. So it's got some allergens. This is our big number 10 can. And, you know, gluten-free, soy-free, no artificial colors, flavors, preservatives, 40 essentials, all that good stuff, 25-year shelf life, and all kinds of awesome things that it can do for you. So, But that's that's our best seller right there, the Home South Scramble. 
great way to start your morning. So, you know, we were talking about, uh, you know, the, the shutdown and food getting, you know, it was hard to get during the, the COVID. You know, there's a lot of things. There's still a lot of things that are still hard to get. Uh, a lot of our uh, manufacturers out there, you know, not just in the firearms industry, but everywhere are having trouble getting the components that they need to, to make the products that they sell. Uh, and you know, it's kind of that thing where it's really hitting hard now because of the other countries and, you know, our supply that we had has gone down and we can't get the supply that we need. But, um, I've been getting plenty of supply apparently, and I've put on some, (laughs) put on some weight. So the, where I'm going with this is if somebody were wanting to go on a diet, maybe, and, uh, you know, cut down some, some pounds, would this be a a good way to go with that as well? Well, uh that's an interesting question. Uh, we don't market it as a diet food. However, there are a <laughs> lot of people that use it as such uh-huh. uh, because it's it's a complete meal. It's, it, it has everything that you need, and the calories are nutrient-dense calories, and you do feel satiated. I, I got to say, you feel satiated after you eat this food. Yeah. I have it for breakfast and lunch and dinner. I usually go home. My wife spoils me some, with something very indulgent and, and delicious so i kind of give it up at, at dinner but i have that cereal every morning for, yeah. for breakfast i have that home style scramble pretty much every day for lunch I, I love this stuff and then if i don't have that i'll try one of my other varieties like the chef downstairs is always picking up something new and so that's one of the benefits of, of my job i get to try a lot of this food out yeah. and, and what's uh what's next you know and for those road warriors you know like you're talking about as, as much travel that you do uh, I mean, these would be great things to throw in your suitcase, your backpack, um, yep. and you could just, you know, you have a good nutritious meal just from one of these uh, single packs here. And I, I would assume that you could probably just, and I didn't try this, but I'm going to, I could just cut the, the top off and put the water directly inside the packet here and mm-hmm. uh, and eat it directly from the packet. Right. You, you absolutely could. Uh, and, and the pack is, is good enough that you could do that. You could also, um, some people, believe it or not, they, they eat this stuff dry. Now, I'm not recommending that, but they eat it dry. and they, I can see they, doing the granola that way, but yeah, uh, yeah. But none of this it's other stuff. I wouldn't do the other stuff that way. you got to be a little crazy to do that. But <laughs> you got to be a little desperate, maybe. I don't know. So, um, you know, the other thing, though, that's kind of cool that we make are some ready-to-eat products, like the granola is ready-to-eat or the crunch, as we, we call it. Uh-huh. But we have cookies, and we also have bars. Yeah. And there you go. You got it. You got the cookie bar. Yeah, or, I'm sorry, the cookie. These are the uh, the cookies, and I got that um, the big container. I went ahead and opened it. But they're in individually packed, so they're still fine. Um, right, all packed. I may yep. have nullified my 25 year shelf life by doing that, but um, <laughs> these are the nutrient survival chocolate chip cookie meals. Cookie meals, and that's and these cookies are. I mean, they're kind of small. It's like if I eat that, I'm going to get mad because I'm going to want you know to eat five or six. <laughs> but, but you're getting inside one of these these cookies. How many ounces are is one cookie? Um, Oh, man, you got me on that one. That's a good question. Well, it's probably about 30 grams, probably about an ounce, ounce and a half or so. I'd have to have to look on the actual yeah. label. But it's two cookies uh, is um, what they base the, the serving size on. So two cookies, you get 220 calories. And I, and I was looking at the size of these things and looking at everything that's packed in there. I'm like, there's no way that these yeah. things have this much uh, yeah. vitamins and minerals and you know, all right. that in them, but they, you know, they, and they don't taste bad either. I like them. They're a little chewy, which I like chewy. Chewy's fine. I got no problem yep. with that. Uh, but they do have a good, uh, a good flavor to them. So good. And all these, Most- all these packages, I mean, that's the thing you're talking about flavor. And that's the thing that I've gotten from things before, like MREs and, you know, those, <laughs> those, those type things. Uh, these definitely blow them out of the water as far as the, the flavor goes. The very first one I tried was the Triple Mac. The triple cheese mac, which I'm not a macaroni and cheese kind of guy. I really detest macaroni and cheese. Um, yeah. Just because when I was younger, you know, I had, I think I got force fed that stuff just about every meal. But um, so I, I was like, I'm going to try that first because it's probably going to be my least favorite. And it actually turned out to be my most favorite um, really? of, of yeah. all of them. Yes, I really like the triple mac and cheese. 
Yeah. Yeah. Triple cheese mac. Um, it it was very very tasty. The the seasonings that you have in there uh, are good. I mean, it would be seasonings that I would add to macaroni and cheese, so I would be able to eat it anyway. So, <laughs> yeah. uh, they were really yeah. good, and it's very one, popular. One thing I would recommend is that I you know I did exactly as the directions say. I put the third of a cup of water, let it sit for the appropriate amount of time. A little bit more water and a little bit more time. Um, mm -hmm. Maybe yeah. my water wasn't hot enough either. It could probably could have been a little bit hotter, but I actually kind of liked it a little crunchy. <laughs> it was, I did, and I think maybe that's what I, I really liked about it. So I mean, it wasn't like, but it had just right. a little. It was just a little bit under under prepared, and I think that's what really made it for me. You know, that's that's a good tip. Yeah, because we say. Let it stand for eight to ten minutes on that package, mm -hmm. and the noodles are a special noodle that is a little bit thinner, and what that allows it it, it to rehydrate quicker, right? Okay. And uh, and get a, a, a serving um, for you sooner um, versus some of the other more traditional elbow macaronis and yeah. and you know macaronis that craft you know sells uh, in those boxes that you're talking about, mm -hmm. but. Yeah, I, lo I love mac and cheese. That was probably one of my go-tos as a kid, and I, I love this one just as well. Yeah, well, like I said, I think I probably got burnt out on it when I was a kid, um, but uh, I definitely like this. This is something that you could, you could like mass, you know, put it in like a Betty Crocker box and sell it on the Kroger shelf or Walmart shelf. There, I think you know, kids would love that too. But that was Thank my favorite, you. and then the three bean, the Southwestern medley was uh, a really good one too. Now. The thing about this is you can mix these with other things too, but like I said earlier, they could stand on their own. So you could mix tuna, you could mix chicken, you could uh, you yes. know, have these as a complement to other things that you're going to have with your meal. Uh, right. But they could stand, like you said, they could just stand alone on their own and uh, sustain you in, a, you know, in times of emergency or you know, those backpacking yep. trips, hiking, camping trips kind of thing. Yeah, and I guess the military, you guys are looking at maybe, um, is the military interested in this and – Maybe switching out some of those MREs for their their troops. I think that would be the uh, soldiers would be pretty excited. I think if if they swapped out their MREs for this stuff, because uh, well, you've got know, personal I, experience with that, you know. I've had plenty of MREs for sure, and the the the, the thing about MREs they weren't designed to make your tummy happy per se. You know, <laughs> it was designed so that you could be ready to go complete the mission, and it's. It's really interesting, um, Marty and you know, Lefty, that the, the military studied this stuff for years, you know, and they've actually written regulations and, and guidance documents about uh, what a warrior athlete should be eating. And guess what they said? Nutrient density, nutrient density. So all of those MREs are packed with nutrients so that you're getting everything that you need and you can sustain yourself, you know, perform the military operation and then so there's actually two types of MREs there's what they call operational MREs and then there's also called restricted MREs and restricted is even more nutrient packed and more nutrient dense than the regular MREs oh, okay. that Bailey's walking around eating uh, the restricted rations are for special operations forces guys that are on you know, deep behind enemy lines, and they have they have they're carrying everything on their back for ten days, and every ounce matters. And these are even more nutrient dense. And our food, when you when you marry up the standards that are established for those special ops rations versus our food, we exceed it by two and a half times. Oh wow! On a calorie for calorie basis, two and a half times. So nice. We yeah, we, we consider ourselves special ops grade with uh, with with those nutrients in there. Loaded I like up. that special ops grade. Yeah, man. <laughs> so I you know I don't know the military. It's a long process. We're brand new. It's not the first place that we're we're hunting. Sure. Uh, we've got some some guys that are former SF, former SEAL, former Ranger, you know Ranger Regiment kind of guys that are that are trying our stuff and they really like it and they, they see it working with, you know, what they do today. They're, they're former, so they're not active obviously, yeah, yeah. but get a guy like, uh, and I mean, that's really the person you want testing your stuff. Somebody who's had the, the old, you know, is like, yeah. well, wow, if I really had this during my yeah. time, then it would have made this difference, you know? That's it. 
I mean, they, they know. They've been there. They've, they've been through the most stressful situations you can possibly imagine, taking fire. You know, it's one thing to shoot a target downrange. It's another thing for that target to be you. Mm. And these guys have seen all that, right? And the military knows that you got to have a sharp mind and body to get through those situations. And there's a reason they, they, they require the composition of the MREs and the, these restricted rations to be the way they are. Yeah. You know, there's a reason. Yeah. So anyway, we're pretty proud of that fact. Very good. And, you know, the, another reason that I was talking about the, uh, you know, the diet aspect of it is, and you said athletes as well, um, is, you know, like the gym rats and I've taken a few months off and it's shown, uh, but I got to get back in the gym. And then, you know, once I start that, then I'll start with the, you know, my, getting my diet back and the supplements, yeah. you know, with the, the powder drinks and the, you know, the, the creatine and you know all that stuff um yeah. instead of like that with these you know is that something that could be beneficial as well? i mean i could see that it would be eating one of these versus going and eating you know some of those powdered shakes and things like that that they have you know our shake is loaded it's probably our most complete um oh, one have of our a shake also we have a shake, and we have a shake in a, in a single, and that's something that you didn't get because oh. it wasn't part of that variety pack. Oh, okay. Uh, we sell that in a big can and and uh, in singles as well. But we have, you know, there's 20 amino acids in total, and nine of those are what they call essential aminos that you have to take, you have to take through food because you're you're not getting it any other way. And so all of our stuff, again, has nine amino acids, 25% of your DV there. Um, creatine, I'm looking, creatine is not one of those. They're no, hist it's, histamine, isolate. Anyway, creatine is sold not as like a performance enhancer, you know, kind of right. deal. But basically, but I take it because it's, um, you know, as far as the muscle goes and whatnot, it gets, it gets more, um, it less fatigued. So it increases yeah, your, totally. yeah, kind of thing. It's you get it, you get it. Uh, it's it's about what your body needs, and you got to start again at that cellular level and provide all those nutrients. Otherwise, you're you're going to be st stuck. Yeah. Um, now you know, the non-essential amino acids. Let's read those. It's it's hist histidine, valine, isoleucine, leucine, phenylalanine, not phenylphthalein, phenylalanine. <laughs> Uh, theroine, theronine, uh, tryptophan, which tryptophan yeah. you get out of turkey. That's the uh, one that I, makes you sleepy. Is, is that it? Okay. Yeah. The, more than the tryptophan, uh, the methio nine. I haven't heard of that one before. And the lysine. I've heard of all those, but number eight. Um, there you go. There you go. Yeah. So but you, also, you have that in yours. Those are packed in there. Packed in every single serving has 25% of your your daily value in that, and then we've got a bunch of other good stuff that is hard to get in your diet, like omega three. Mm -hmm. uh, that's a hard one to get, so we we've, we've got that, and it's usually you get it from you know fish and flax. Those are two popular sources of it, but our our food doesn't use the fishy type, and it it tastes tastes great. You know that's one of the the keys, and omega six as well. Those both both in there, and then fiber. You know, so 40 essential nutrients, 25% of your DV, and the food tastes amazing, as you attested to. Yeah. You don't taste any minerals? Did you taste any vitamins? No. No, I didn't. Yeah. I didn't did. So, again, you know, I was comparing it to, you know, like when I get on my, my workout diet and the stuff that I'm eating and that, you know, a lot of that stuff's got a, like a taste to it. You know, it's it's like this is part of it. I got to, you know, take this to get the stuff I need. But, right. you know, as I'm reading the ingredients to this, I'm like, you know, this has got – all the stuff that that my supplements have in them, uh, but they taste good. So uh, <laughs> that's, that's the difference. And you know, that's good. the thing too is I can't like if I'm if I know I'm going on like a big hike or you know I'm gonna work out. I can't I can't eat beforehand because I don't I can't you know I don't want to be full while I'm doing that. But I want energy, so that's why I do like the powdered drinks and stuff like that. Um, yeah. Um, yeah. these, I mean, these, when I ate them, I didn't feel full, but I didn't feel hungry either. You know, if that right. makes sense, you know, I ate them and it's like, I could go work out or I could go and, you know, bike 25 miles or whatever. Um, 
that's a good place to be. You know, I, I hate feeling full. You just feel lethargic. You feel like, man, I shouldn't have done that. You know, when my, my wife asked me to eat that last little bit in the skillet, yeah, and I just don't want to, but that I do because I feel like I have, to, you know, I just don't feel good. And I agree with you. There's something about that in between, not hungry, but you're not bloated. Yeah. Right. It, yeah. It, you don't feel like you gotta go take a poo. You know, you don't want to take a poo in the middle of a strenuous, you know exercise or job you know <laughs> no of course not of yeah. course not now that's, that's the other thing you're gonna try it i'm i'm gonna try it again i'm eating one of these cookies because i'm i'm like in between meals right now so um yeah i'm eating one right now and they're, it's like an oatmeal kind of you ever eat an oatmeal cookie um that's the flavor yeah. that you're getting the chocolate you know the little chips in there give it that little sweet cocoa Right. Flavor. But these are good. I mean, and these yeah. are a meal. They're not a cookie. I mean, it's not like a, you know, a little, but it is, it serves as a little snack treat. Cause everybody, like me, after I eat a meal, I, I want something a little sweet when I get done, you know? Right. Yeah. So think about that. That's 100 calories, basically 110 calories is what you, you said it was 220 for, for two. two. Yeah. 110. And it's a good for you cookie. Healthy. Right. Yeah, it's not like an Oreo or a, a Chips Ahoy kind of thing where like you said, you're getting those empty calories and there's no nutritional value whatsoever. Right. Um, which is kind of what I've been, you know, sitting on my big fat ass watching TV eating <laughs> ding dongs yeah. and Oreo cookies. And that's where this, this weight has come on, you know, so I could eat these instead. You, you could. You could. And, and satiate that, that craving. Yeah. Yeah. And that's real chocolate in there, of course. And, uh, you know, one of my favorite things when I walk around downstairs, we have our production facility. We, we're made in the U.S. right here in Reno. Everything is sourced, local, end-to-end um, -end production. And one of my favorite things is walking out on the floor and looking at the ingredients that are coming in. And we get these massive pallets of chocolate chips. And I'll go over to those big pallets of chocolate chips and I'll just I'll – just, stand over there and sniff it in because it smells so good. Oh, I you can know, imagine, man. It's real That's chocolate awesome. coming in these 50 pound, you know, bags of chocolate chips. There it is. You got it. Yeah. I had my background on, so it wasn't showing up on the video. You should have, should have reminded me. I forgot. <laughs> it's okay. I've been holding up this stuff and it's probably not been showing up. Uh, it's, it comes on and off, but like it's all right. Triple Mac and cheese. That light might be a little too bright. Turn it off there. Yeah, that's good. Yes. Well, yeah, but no, I was really impressed with it. Um, yeah. But but now you're telling me that you're coming out with more flavors uh, than than what I'm seeing here. So talk about the new flavors that you got. You said something about a lasagna that really captured my uh, attention. There, I love pasta. I'm a pasta yeah. loving guy. Well, so the mac and cheese was such a success for us. We wanted to come out with some other pasta flavors, mm -hmm. um, and lasagna is, is super popular. People love lasagna. People love, you know, stroganoff type type stuff as well. Oh but, man, I love stroganoff. Beef yeah, stroganoff absolutely. is like one of my favorites too. There you go. That's on the docket. But um, the one that's coming out at the end of the month is going to be the lasagna, and we also have seen some pretty good success with our uh, with our basics. So we have a vitamin milk. We call it. And it's uh, basically powdered milk, but with your vitamins and nutrients in there. And those have done really well, especially in the can. So we're coming out with eggs as well. And that'll be... Just plain old eggs. It, well, it's going to be an egg blend, and it will have a lot of the good stuff, all the good stuff in there as well for our vitamin eggs. So is and that different be than the, the home-style scramble? Yeah, you know, it's different in that the home-style scramble, we make... We make food a couple different ways. The homestyle scramble uh, is we're taking real ingredients, like I said, mixing up potatoes and cheese and eggs and and heavy cream and peppers and all kinds of other good stuff, and and then we freeze dry it and take the water out and it turns into this uh, very dry, lightweight, long lasting. There it is, long lasting food that's called freeze dried food, and that's the stuff that lasts a long time if you take care of it. Now, the other way we make stuff is 
like with our shake, we blend it, uh, ingredients together, and that doesn't need to go into a freezer. So the eggs we're using, uh, we're going to use um, basically powdered eggs, whole powdered eggs with vitamins and minerals, and so it will not be a you know add hot water and you've got a uh, a meal. Yeah, it will it will look like a raw egg, so you can use it just like raw eggs, but have the convenience of it being a dry mix on hand, won't spoil. Always something that everybody should have, a couple of cans of that stuff sitting around. Because think about all the places we use eggs everywhere. But if you yeah. want a little omelet or something, you know, that's that's something, or making a cake, you know, all these things that use eggs, you just basically substitute it with this dry stuff. You um, reconstitute it, of course, before you, you use it. Sure. But you use it just like, and then we're going to put some of that in these little singles as well. So we're going to get a half dozen eggs in one of these. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, that's one of the single serving packs he's holding up there for you, listeners that are yeah. watching us on YouTube. And, yeah, and these are anywhere from like uh, two to two and a half ounces on the the size of these single servings. That's right. Uh, packs that that's we're looking at there. Just but, imagine going out on the trail and hey, what's for breakfast? Let's let's have some eggs and get some water, boil it up, add it to your your dry eggs, have your egg mix, and put it into your little camp uh, camp camp skillet camp pan over your jet boil and you got uh, scrambled eggs in the morning it'd be great yeah absolutely so um i want to take some listener questions i, I did a, a post prior to the show and uh, i know there's there's several questions that we got from our listeners on instagram and on facebook and um we probably should have done a warning at the beginning of the show you know that you're going to be hungry you know <laughs> Warning, you will experience hunger pains listening to this show. <laughs> I saw. Um, but I came prepared. I got, you know, I got me some snacks with the I saw you digging into those cookies. The cookies That's good there. They they're tasty. I like them. They're Did right. you get some of our bars or peanut butter bars? Those are really good as well. No, uh uh So I just got yeah. the the little sampler pack and then I got the cookies. So All right, I'll have to hook you up with the peanut butter bars. Oh yeah. Yeah, I love that. Peanut butter. Can't, can't All right, let's go to let's go to Facebook. And are you on the internet there where you can get on the interwebs? Can you pull up Facebook? Go to Talking Let's Facebook page. Sure. sure, I can try. If you would. And we'll just field some questions here from the Leadhead Brigade. That's what we call our listeners, the Leadheads. And they're part of the Leadhead Brigade. All right. You notice I get a theme with the name Talking Lead. Every education, the lead quarters, lead heads. I love it. <laughs> when did you when did you coin that term, lead heads? Uh, pretty much early on when we first started the the podcast about ten years ago. Um, That's amazing. Lead it's amazing heads. that you had all the energy to keep it going for ten years, Marty. Well, man, it's something I enjoy. Yeah, it's one yeah. of those things where you know, if as long as this is is enjoyable to me and I have fun doing it. I'll continue to do it. But the, the minute it's not fun anymore, I'm not going to do it anymore, but I don't, I don't see a problem with that anytime soon. All right. So here's the post. It's the one I did with the, the flashy lights. Uh, you see that one? Yeah. Okay. Uh, we've got, it's like we've got eight comments so far and I, I apologize. I should have posted this uh, earlier. I usually give a couple of days for everybody, but we get, it's less than 20 up. 24 hours so sorry leadheads that was my bad i was preparing for jack carr so don't feel bad uh, <laughs> so this one is from hugh or h-o-u-g-h would you say hugh gene stoner okay do you ever package water treatment tools with your meal packages if we lose access to food potable water uh, could it also become an issue? Having this all together could be convenient. Okay. It's a great idea. Well, you know, I, I like uh, water is, gosh, it's one of the most important things you can have, obviously. Um, I always, I, I, I'm kind of old school army guy, and I like to carry these little iodine tabs. Mm -hmm. That's kind of my go-to. And then I also have a life straw um, yeah. that I have in my, you know, EDC and all that. I was going to say to answer her question. I mean, these guys specialize in, you know, the the food, the the, the survival mm -hmm. food. There are other companies that do the treatment tools and do them well. 
I mean, it probably to to collaborate maybe with one of those companies with your product might you know maybe sometime down the road. But right. they're a new company, you know. They're they're exploring this stuff, so that's a good suggestion. It is. That is. Thank you for that. Yeah. Uh, peruse down through there. See if you see one that you'd like to to field. Okay. Uh, let's see. I'm opening it up here. A few more comments. How would a family of four? How much would a family of four need for a month? What's the best way to store in a small home with limited space? What is a safe way to store water? Big containers, barrels with bleach. Okay, so so um, yeah, I mean, I generally speaking, right? For a family of four, um, three days is seventy-two meals, and we boy, you're going to challenge me here for some some. Uh, it's okay. You can you can pop up a calculator if you need to. <laughs> oh, yeah, there's no shame well, in calculators. We we do sell a a, a sixty day kit and a thirty day kit, but one of our popular items is a seventy two hour kit, and that's that's three days for a family of four, seventy two meals. So that would be thirty times seventy two, or ten. I'm sorry, ten times seven hundred twenty meals, and each of our cans is about depending on what you have. The entree is about ten, so you need like seventy cans of this stuff, uh, which you know that's an investment. But that's that's a little bit what prepping is is about, you know. Unfortunately, it takes time and money and yeah. uh, thick skin too. Sometimes you have to withstand folks that may be pointing their finger and laughing at you a little bit. But hey, it's, your your family is 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 worth it, right? This is about responsibility and and Absolutely. taking care of yourself and your family. Yeah. And everybody's got to start somewhere. You know, you got to start somewhere sometime. And everybody's got different budgets, different storage uh, capacities. So. You know, you've got That's to right. do what's right for you, and it's never too late to start. Um, yep. I mean, unless a, a t catastrophe hits you, then, yeah, it's probably too late if you haven't started yet. But, uh, you right. know, this isn't just for times of, of you know, like uh, apocalyptic type stuff. We experienced the COVID this past year, which was a, a prime example of something that can hit you uh, un, unannounced. Uh, but it happens every single year. There's, there's, there's natural disasters that happen across the world. Every single year with floods and tornadoes and earthquakes and fires and, you know, you just and people aren't prepared. But yet they know that tornado season's coming, hurricane season's coming. And That's it's right. just like it's news to them. It's like, oh, I didn't have, you know, I got no food. I got no water. Well. Right. Uh, that's your, that's your yeah. own fault. <laughs> everybody, everybody thinks it's not going to happen to them. I mean, Texas. No, who would have called the, the deep storm? Yeah, the snowstorm. And we we had, I tell you, we had a ton of folks from Texas that were thanking us that they had purchased um, food and had it on hand because again, all you all you need is a little bit of water. It doesn't even have to be hot water, like like I like I said, um, to to help get you through those situations. But you know, if it's not one thing like a natural disaster, you might have some other electrical disruption. Um, you know, everyone everyone should have a little bit on hand for sure. And to your point, you don't need to buy it all at once. I've got some customers that have come back six, seven times, and they they'll buy four cans at you know at a time when they yeah. come back. As it's just a little bit easier easier that way. You know, you know, we've got a, a payment plan if you want to do something like that too. But no, it's not like you're buying a Mercedes Benz here. You're, it's you're like buying investing in your 401k. You take a little bit each month and you put in that 401k. So, you know, at the same mindset, go and buy, you know, three, four cans a, a month, you know, whatever you're comfortable with and start right. your storage up. And then before long, you know, you're going to have a year worth of storage, two years worth of storage. Uh, but you got to, it's, it's a little bit, you know, not everybody has the financial capacity to, to buy right. a five-year supply for a four a family of four, you know that's just financially impossible. You know, it's like buying a car. You know? <laughs> right, right, exactly. No, that's exactly it. Um, and that being and said, do you offer finance? Uh, do you do you finance your your stuff? If somebody did want to go and buy a five-year storage plan right off the the bat, <laughs> well, we have to work with them, I'm sure. But we, I mean, for for most people that are looking to to make a purchase, there there are some different payment plans that are available. Um, we use a service called Klarna. It's oh. kind of like a pay if you've heard of Afterpay. Same same general idea where you can break it into installments. Oh, I was just and, kidding. So you actually do offer that. Nice. 
Yeah, yeah, that's that's there. I think we we offer it on two hundred and eighty dollar uh, to I think it's about a thousand dollars is what they what they will do for you, and it's a third party service. We pay a service fee. Yeah. Um, but they're the one extending the the term, so we don't have to get into that's not our business, right? Sure. But uh, but there, there are there's a solution uh, for that. Yeah, yeah. So we've got that hooked up if people are interested in it. Very nice. Very yeah. Nice. So did we answer that guy's question? I don't know. <laughs> you know, storage wise, that's a that's a good question. It's a concern, especially if you're in a smaller place or apartment or whatnot. And you know, the great thing about this food, it's freeze dried. So you take you know a big batch of food and you condense it into uh, a small space, and that's what these number ten cans are all about. You can get ten servings of food in here, and you know it's pretty full. It's it's nice and it's heavy. Now is that are those little individual packets in there, or is that just the whole? The product that's in that full can there. Yeah, it's 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 so you the scoop product, it out. Uh, scoop it out. You scoop it out and serving. You can so you can make as much as you want or as little as you want. And there's directions on the back to help you with that. For a cup, you would serving add a size. half cup uh, of boiling water, and that would be about a serving. So there's there's a lot of food in here, and that's good stuff. Yeah. So I don't know if you could come out with much more uh, condensed version of food other than maybe Campbell's condensed soup, something like that. But this is right in the same vein of that. Yeah. Well, those, uh, you know, if you did a, like a, a, a vacuum seal, you know, package, yeah. maybe that would condense it down and make yep. some yeah. more storage. But as far as organization storage wise, the, the cans, uh, right. and the people who are watching our video right now, you can see behind Eric, how he's got his shelf set up with it. And that's how you would kind of go about, uh, doing that. But for, if you've got limited space, I mean, you then you're limited. Then there's really nothing that that That's anybody right. can do uh, to to help with that because you got to store other things too. You got your your ammo and your you know your firearms and your uh, medicine. You know, essential Definitely. you know the essential things that you want to stock up on. You know, medicine being one of the the key next to food. Um, so That's right. That's right. Yeah, it's the other cool thing about the cans. We're, and we're going to come out, believe it or not, we're coming out with what you just described, more of a multi-serve pouch that you can have in a pantry and use it every day. A lot of things in the grocery store come in pouches, as you know, you know, something that looks like this maybe. Um, but the can, especially for a long-term storage solution, nothing's getting through there. I mean, you're not, you're not worried about insects or mice or even uh, just kind of exposure to the elements or light. It's it's sealed in there, and you and you're going to have a really strong shelf life. Um, number one, because it's freeze dry, but then also because we have oxygen absorbers and we're flushing that stuff so that it's it's locking in you know the food and nothing but the food. So good stuff. All right, let's go to Instagram now and see what we've got on Instagram. <clears throat> let's go. Let's see. There's. Rayo Shields, what makes this product stand out? Question mark. What are what are going to be the points of sale? I think we mm-hmm. kind of talked about that already. Yeah, I definitely. Think, I think we covered that. Uh, Austin Whalen, is there enough volume in the single packs to put water straight into it? Uh, I, yeah, good question. I just uh, asked that. So, yes, there is. <laughs> There is. It would be a little challenging. I mean, you'd have to have a pretty long spoon. So unlike, well, you some, just turn so, it up and chug it. Yeah, you know? you could. You know, the, the way I would do it, honestly, and I'm a big fan of pack in less, pack out less. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, because a lot of the stuff that you you buy today is just in big bulky packaging and a little bit of food in the bottom, and so yeah. you're carrying all that stuff out. Potato with you. chips this, being a prime example of that. Right, <laughs> bag of potato chips. You know, you think you're getting this big bag, and you open it up, and it's only you know. Right, right. Now tell tell me, these things are packed, right? They're really packed. No, on the uh, the scramble when I opened it up, that would be the only one that I would think maybe may not have enough uh, volume. Oh. But I think there's probably enough in there too. But uh, it started pouring out <laughs> when I cut yeah. the cut. Yeah, the mine top. is really full. I was like, damn, it's full. It's not air. Here. That's that's real product. So yeah, interesting. But yeah, I think there's still plenty of room to be able to add the water straight to the the single yep. packets there and not have an issue. Yep. And then yep. uh, you know get us you know bring you a, a spork or something like that. But 
you could just chug them down straight too. Uh, yeah, you could do that. that. Use your fingers. You got people. Use your fingers. <laughs> God's God's natural spoon right here. Yeah. There, there it is. Uh, Sack Archer. If one was to include Twinkies in long term, this is going to get to our next segment. We'll we'll save that one. Okay. I think you want to talk about Twinkies in our our upcoming segment here. Um, but I'll read his question. So, if one were to include Twinkies in long term storage, could you just market it as infinite shelf life? Suppose you could potentially do the same. I suppose you could do the same with honey. So. Yeah. Yeah, interesting. Okay. Troy TX, just curious. How do we know that these items will be good for 25 years? What kind of technology is involved in rating a food item shelf life? That's a great question. That's a, it is, boy. Um, yeah, it, it's a great question. Um, believe it or not, there, and I know this also from my military days, you know, one of the things that you have to understand with military equipment is, is it able to withstand the elements over time? And, you know, you don't take it out on a, uh, you don't put it out in a soldier's hand unless it's gone through a lot of testing. And so we actually had areas where you put equipment sitting out in a yard and let it get the crap, you know, cooked out of it by the sun and by the, by the rain and by the wind and sand and all that stuff. So there's similar uh, techniques for food. And one of those is called um, accelerated shelf life testing. And literally you can expose food to temperature and to, and to, um, conditions, right? Water conditions, uh, water vapor, oxygen conditions, and you can get a read on its, its shelf life on a faster basis. So there's, there's a lot of data as it relates to freeze dried and how that is able to withstand aging and and then as you again take there, there, a couple things that d deteriorate the food one is oxygen and the other is you know water moisture and all of our packaging materials are rated so that this is a, such a strong barrier nothing's getting through there no no light no water no water vapor same thing for our individuals now we don't warrant uh, warranty 25 years on our individuals these are more three years okay because it's not a can you know this is just this is packaging, right. and uh, but it does have a, a foil lining, mylar. You hear a lot about that uh, with the prepper community, and what mylar basically is, it's a, a polyethylene coated uh, with with some sort of a metal substrate to help protect um, the food from, again, water transmission, water vapor transmission, or oxygen transmission through that barrier. So anyway, long answer to. Testing allows you to to validate that the shelf life uh, is what it is. Very good. Now, uh, when you buy vitamins and minerals, and again, I'm sure this goes into how you package it, but right. but those tend to lose their potency obviously over time. And mm -hmm. in your um, your canned products, yeah. the potency of those are still you know people can still yeah. expect the potency that that's advertised on those? Well, so it's a, it's a great question as well. Um, when we mix the vitamin packet and the nutrient packet in with our food, uh, it allows for that to get locked in as part of that freeze dried process. So, so, you know, our, our expectation is that the potency will still be there. I mean, what goes in the can is still going to be in the can. Mm -hmm. um, uh, you know, I would expect like, other things, right? Um, that you know, in 25 years, I'm probably going to bequeath this to my children uh, because it'll still be, you know, it'll still be there, it'll still be in the can. Hopefully, I, I haven't had to dig into it. But every good prepper actually knows that they should rotate their food um, and not stick stick to the 25 year shelf life. But over time, you know, you're rotating things out, you're rotating things in, and you've always got a fresh supply, so to speak. And you want to do that with your medicine. You want to do that with your fuel. You want to do that with pretty much anything that you're relying on. You know, anything that sits around for a while, just like a car that hasn't been started, things are going to start to break. So you don't want to wake up in an emergency and find out that, shoot, you know, it's not working today. My batteries have, have gone out and my, my, my uh, flashlight's corroded or whatever it happens to be. So that would be my advice on that one for sure. Very good. Good advice. Uh, we got a couple of questions here. We've we've kind of already gone. Nathan Shepard was asking about how would you start prepping, you know, again, 
you know, yeah. just start yeah. prepping, start going and buying your stuff at, at what you can afford. Uh, yeah. A lot of X amount each month, uh, budget it, you know, just got, you got to budget it like anything else. That's um, it. is there a good way to store water long term? Uh, yeah. Live by a river. <laughs> 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 buy a swim pool. Uh, <laughs> Go. Uh, I I don't know. I mean, there are ways that you can, I guess, uh, store water, revitalize water. You're talking about the iodine tablets and you know things like that. Uh, there, do you have any other tips or tricks as far as the water goes? Well, a popular thing is um, big, you know, big jugs. Um, you can buy these things at prepper stores. You can even buy them at at farm stores. You know, big blue jugs. And you should always have a little bit of bleach around as well. You think about those little iodine tabs. It's great if you're out of the house, but if you're in a if you're in a shelter in place situation and the and the water goes out and the water supply is questionable for whatever reason, flooding or whatever, you know, bleach bleach will kill a lot of stuff. And you talk you, you jokingly talked about having a swimming pool in the backyard. Um, you know, I, I would expect a couple gallons of bleach could clean up a lot of that and give you a, quite a supply of, of water uh, in in a desperate situation. Obviously, yeah. you don't you don't have to go out and boil try this it. Stuff. You know, you treat it, you boil it because you know it's going to have the chlorine in it. Um, but right. a swimming pool catches rainwater also. Sure. You right. So, right. Um, there you go. Um, did you see any other ones there that? Uh, that interests you? I think we've pretty much answered the the majority of them. Your your, your guys are uh, your your lead heads, right? Uh, lead heads, sh- yeah. Smart, smart. They know what they need to know. Guys and gals, uh, yeah. And again, I apologize, lead heads, for not posting this sooner. Uh, but if you do have questions, maybe that we didn't cover um, during this episode, shoot me an email, talkinglead at gmail dot com. And uh, we'll try to get your questions answered either through me or Eric. I'll forward them on to Eric, or they can just get directly in touch with you. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. We're um, on the internet. They're on the the interwebs. They're on Instagram. They're on the Facebooks, uh, and of course yeah. their website. You go know, to their website, which is nutrientsurvival.com. Nutrientsurvival.com. Nutrient Got it. Just how it sounds. Just the way it sounds. And I think we're giving you a, a, a link too that you might be able to put somewhere, and people want to use that, they they can. And I think we're going to try to extend um, a little bit of favorable terms to them. There you go. So what he's talking about, lead heads, is that that discount code that we're famous for here on the Talking Lead Podcast. We take care of our listeners. So if you want to get into, you want to start the long term food storage, or you're a survivalist, you're a backpacker, you're a hiker. Um, you're working out, you want an alternative to the, uh, the, you know, the protein powders and things like that. We're going to hook you up with a discount code and it's, it's our classic discount code leadhead that you can use at nutrient survival's website. And that's going to get them. What, what are the, what are we giving them there, Eric? Give them 10%. 10% off. There you go. So there's, there's more incentive for you. If you haven't started your long-term storage uh, you, you'll be able to get a little bit more than you normally would have. So you can, instead of a week, you can go ahead and start off with two weeks supply. That's right. Very That's right. cool. Thank you for doing that. Um, Eric, yeah, we appreciate that. I know our Plus, listeners will appreciate it as well. Yeah. And it's free shipping too. If you know, get over a hundred bucks, which doesn't take too long to do that when you're buying, um, prepper food and that bulk, sort of thing. Yeah. In bulk and uh, yeah, free shipping off to lower 48 and then Alaska, Hawaii, we also ship too. Okay. Well, we've got listeners worldwide. So, All right. Do you APOs ship, are good. Do you ship other countries too? We don't ship other countries uh, for commerce. Gotcha. We've done a few things with just samples and, and folks like that. But APOs and FPOs, we do that, of course. Okay. We've got a lot of uh, military men and women overseas serving our country that – that listen Good. to the show, so uh, have it shipped to your house, and it'll be there when you when you get back. Uh, there you go. You can take it on your next deployment. Share it with your buds. Um. So now, what we want to do is, and and some of your questions, um, kind of alluded to it. Now it's time for the talking lead back to fight the myths. Ooh, yeah. Exciting and and. 
you know, based on our topic today, Eric has some great myths that we're going to bust. So, oh, okay. where do you want to start with our our first myth? Uh, you tell me. You tell me what what piques your interest there. Uh, let's just start at the top. Let's start at the first one and, and work our way down. I like it. All right. All right. Well, the first big myth I would say is that. I get a lot of people that uh, ask me like, "Hey, what what are you what are you doing?" I'm like, "Well, I make you know we make emergency food," and they're like, "Oh, emergency food." So the first myth is that emergency food is supposed to taste bad, and and and, and you know what? That is that is true, unless of course it's nutrient survival, because <laughs> we have uh, our the guy that makes our food downstairs. He is a trained, certified chef. Uh, no kidding. Oh, That's okay. bringing us together and creating our recipes. And then, like I said, all we do then is we take it and we freeze dry it and it, it locks all that great taste in there. In fact, I, like I said before, I, I call it surprisingly awesome taste because you just won't know it and uh, not until you try it. And now now it's easy to try it because we have these samplers out there. So is this guy actually down there like like in a restaurant? He's down there cooking. He's got the pans, the the smells and everything's going. Do you do you get to eat this stuff before it's freeze dried? I do. I eat it before, during. Well, not during. I, before and after. Before and, and after. It's 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 very good stuff. Now, one of the things we love uh, a couple things as as humans, we love salt, we love sugar, we love fat. You know, and it's just the the way that we were made, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, what we try to do is make sure we're not compromising any of that great taste. So. We used to have a very, uh, before my time here, a very rigid um, health profile mm-hmm. that prevented some of that deliciousness that that we seek as you know creatures. Yeah, yeah. Salt. But but now you know we, we don't cut any corners. Like you, you talked about the the triple cheese mac. Yeah. And this is not health food. Okay. I didn't this have is- to add anything to that because you know normally I'll add like some garlic salt or some pepper. or you know, something right. like that. But to that, I didn't have to add anything to it. The flavor was there. It's That's exactly it. And it's because we're using real real ingredients yeah. and we're just masking. But, but again, you know, the, people's tastes are like their foot size. You know, everybody's got a different foot size. And, a, you know, uh, yeah. what I consider, you know, spicy enough, maybe it's over spicy for some, maybe it's not spicy enough, but you can always add to these. You know, that's the great thing about them too, is you can add to them. Uh, just like the, uh, you know, for instance, on the the oatmeal, um, the cinnamon oatmeal. Yeah. I, you know, I'm used to eating that. Um, uh, what brand is that? Quaker oatmeal with the cinnamon brown sugar. Quaker. Uh, Quaker, which I'm sure it's the worst thing in the world you could probably eat. <laughs> um, uh, so, but they're just like, it's just like, bam, lots of yeah. overwhelming with the sugar. I added right. a little bit to this because that's not what I'm normally used to when I eat it, but it was still yeah. good. I, you know, the cinnamon flavor was there. It hit me. It was good. The texture uh, was was good. You know, it was an oatmeal texture. Uh, and that's a lot of thing, too, with people's, like, texture of these things. If it's not similar to what they're used to, then, you know, they're just going to automatically di- discard it. But, uh, you know, right. I, I knew I was eating oatmeal when I was eating this. And, um, and- I'll tell you something about the Quaker stuff. They, they they will be really upset if they knew this, but we've done a lot of math behind the scenes around the nutrition content of all these different foods that are similar to our foods. And we, you know, on a calorie for calorie basis, when you score all the nutrients, we created a, a scale and our nutrients per calorie is 10 times wow. that of oats. Pick pick whatever you want. We're ten times or more than than Quaker Road. So when you talk about, you know, making your calories work for you, mm-hmm. uh, no question about it. You know, nutrient survival is the way to go. There you go. There you go. So food, uh, food the taste. You got it. You got yep. The taste is there. Emergency food doesn't have to taste bad. It doesn't. Okay. Second myth. You ready for this one? Yeah, the, this this the gets Twinkies. <laughs> the Twinkies gets back to one of the questions on Instagram. I forgot the gentleman's name, but. Uh, the myth is that Twinkies qualify as emergency food. And uh, the fact is that is only true if you are as a part of the Walking Dead cast or Zombieland, okay? <laughs> that, that Twinkies um, 
are definitely not emergency food, or at least not the emergency food we want people to have. I think they probably are edible, but... Is it even uh, classified the, as food? Can they call it food? I, I think technically it, the FDA has qualified it as a food, uh, a food, and it's labeled as a food. So technically, yes, it's a food. I've had Twinkies. Uh, I think we've all had a Twinkie or two. But the reality is 26 days is the shelf life versus you know 25 years, okay? And so it fails on that criteria. It is absolutely inedible. It gets hard as a rock after a period of time, okay? Yeah. Um, now, our cookies have a little crunch to them, but these are hard as a rock. And then clearly nutrition is as close to zero as you possibly can get. And it's loaded with all kinds of ingredients that you can't even pronounce, all kinds of eights and eights and preservatives. Stuff that, uh, that insects won't even go near. It's pretty, pretty. <laughs> kind of like pretty margarine. Much. Yeah. You know, have you ever tried that? Like put the thing of margarine or, you know, that fake butter stuff out? It's like even, oh, f- even flies won't even get on it. Oh, that's Well, you know you shouldn't eat it then. Right. So it, people are just caking that on their, their toast and their pancakes. and Yeah. Yeah. That was uh, Sack Archer who uh, asked that. Okay. So, okay. Good question. Sack Archer, who is also, his real name is Aura. And we'll see how you pronounce this because he threw out a challenge to us uh, a while back. It's A B P L A N A L P is his last name. Let's spell it one more time. A B A B P L A N A L P. Aplanap, Aplanop, Aplanop. Is that close? Aplanap. Yeah, it's something like that. We we say it different every time. So, but <laughs> we just have fun with it. Okay. We like making qu- fun of our listeners. <laughs> it's a good question. It's a good question. Even after you make fun of him a little bit, he's still with you. So he's a he's a true. Oh yeah, uh, yeah. Well, the leadheads know we take care of them here. So you know, nobody gives back more to their listeners than talking lead. Cool. That's cool. That's good. So let's ne- right. let's hit the next one. Calories give you what you need. Well, we killed this one to dead uh, to death already because again, so many folks just think I got to have uh, food and and only be concerned with calories, and that is indeed a myth because calories give you energy, but the nutrients are what power your body at that again very basic cellular level and keep you. Keep you uh, keep you healthy and keep you your body doing keep you what it was asked. Yeah, keep you awake. That's it. That's it. So we talked enough about that one, but uh, yeah. you know the next one we, too. MREs were designed to make soldiers' tummies happy, and we talked about that. It's we, we killed that one, didn't we? Yeah, it's not their yeah. taste buds. <laughs> so did I talk to you about uh, the cheese in MREs? No, let's let's talk about, yeah. well, what about the, the cheese. cheese? Uh, yeah, so I, you know, the cheese comes in a little packet. Actually, it's probably about, probably about half the size of this guy. Yeah. And you would get uh, in your MREs, you either get cheese or or peanut butter, maybe. But the cheese was one of my favorites. I love the peanut butter too. Um, but you know, what's the one thing you don't want to have when you got a bunch of guys out in the woods? A bunch of guys that have to the go shits. use the latrine, <laughs> right? Exactly, yeah. exactly. So the cheese. And probably some of the other stuff too, but the cheese was was well known for this. Uh, it it absolutely constipated you, plugged you up, and it got you through a short term deployment back to the barracks where you could you know use the the real so latrine. So it was pur- purposeful. <laughs> it was very purposeful. The military guys are not they're not dumb. They know they know what they designed. Definitely there. designed to put a cork in it. <laughs> that's, that's it. It was a cork. Yeah. All right, next one. Uh, that bug out bag in the trunk of your car is enough to get you through. Well, it, it depends through what, right? right? You know, and, and so I don't think anybody wants to uh, have their life depend on a little bag of hope you know, sitting in the back of their car. Uh, you know, it's probably good for three days is what I would recommend, three days worth of stuff in there that you can grab with you and, and, mm-hmm. and take take on the road or take wherever and bounce from one thing to the next. But you know, honestly, everyone should have 30 days supply of, of stuff, be it food or water, uh, medicine you mentioned, uh, ammunition. That'd be good, too, depending on how fast you're firing it. But um, but anyway, the bug out bag has a purpose, uh, and it should be part of your prep plan. But certainly a longer term supply um, makes a lot of sense. And if you're a family, you know, you're traveling, you typically travel with kids and loved ones in your car. It's 
you know, 30 days for everybody. That's it. But it's better than nothing. That's for sure. It's better than nothing. Yeah. yeah. And you can add this to your bug out bag now and they don't take it's, up a lot of space. Exactly. They're perfect. They're perfect for that. Very perfect. So, so speaking of bug out bags, a lot of people um, jump online and there's a new thing out there called Judy and it was actually made Judy. Judy. Don't look it up. I don't okay. want you to go buy it from them. But uh, they they uh, make survival stuff, and they put all these cute little things into these kits. And it was actually started by um, one of Kim Kardashian's friends. Is it J U D Y? J U D Y. Yeah, but you got to go nutrient survival first, you know. Um, no, so so anyway. But the thing is, it's all about these cute little gadgets and stuff. And so the myth here is, you know, having fancy survival gear and the latest gadgets is enough to get through. And and the reality is that it's it's absolutely not because you have to know how to use it, right? So it's it's a it's a I'd like to say it's mindset, skill set, tool set. Mm-hmm. And the, the little gadgets are the tool set, part of it anyway. And the food honestly is a little bit of a tool set too. But you have to know how to do it, right? You have to have the skills to be able to employ those tools, right? You can't have a weapon and not know how to fire it, how mm-hmm. to load it, what kind of ammunition it takes, all that stuff, right? It's, it's worthless. It's a, it's a paperweight. It's, it's junk. So you have to know how to use it. And then you also have to know in your mind, um, have to have the facilities to do it the right way and be ready, right? Rehearsed and practiced and know what you're going to do when you hear a glass break downstairs or know what you're going to do if there's a fire a fire coming and coming at your house you know so you have to ha- have, have to have that mental preparation as part of it as well so it's the three things obviously that are that are important the the, the mindset the skill set and the tool set that make you successful yeah and you lost me uh, on the Judy kit when you said friends of the Kardashians I will you know <laughs> all the more reason not to buy them <laughs> that's it that's it uh, hopefully they're uh, not they're not affiliated with your company so <laughs> but yeah. No thanks. Uh, yeah. What's the next one there? Well, it's one of my favorites because you hear this a lot. We talked about a little bit about it at the beginning of the show that prepping is for crazy people. Yeah. You know, yeah. and it like we said, you know, it's got a little bit of stigma. But you know, my favorite prepper of all time, who? Noah. Okay. Oh my god! Yeah. And if it wasn't the for ultimate Noah, prepper. <laughs> prepper if it wasn't for noah you and me would not be here right now so i gotta say uh i don't think noah is crazy i don't think anybody can say that they've ever prepped on the scale that noah did Uh, i think he's (laughs) like the king prepper he was the king prepper that's awesome (laughs) and we gotta respect that guy man think about it smokes the faith that that man had but at any rate, so, you know, and, and really think about it back in the old days, even our, when I say old days, I mean our, our days, I remember going to high school and seeing fallout shelter signs, mm-hmm. right? And we'd, we'd have practice drills and, and that sort of thing under the desk. Now we had volcanoes and earthquakes and some of it was for that, but literally, you know, the fallout shelter signs, remember those? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. That I'm, I'm 50. So, yeah. So over, over time, you know, we got a little low concerned with uh, Cold War, War stuff after the wall came down and Russia fell apart. But, um, you know, you still, you notice on the on the highways coming from the shore, hurricane routes. And mm-hmm. so it's, it's good to, you know, clearly be prepared for, for emergencies. What what I call eventualities. Not It's not just a matter of if, it's a matter of when. when. Yeah. And you don't know when it will be or what it will be, but something bad is going to happen at some point in time. And, and you don't want to be on the wrong end of that stick, right? Absolutely. So be smart. Be responsible. Do it for your family. Take care of them. Perfect. I like that. So that was a great Facts to Fight the Myth uh, segment. I don't think we ever covered that many in one segment. That's awesome. Right on. Good right job. on. You came prepared. for. See, you, you put all your time into the Facts to Fight the Myth. That's why you weren't prepared for the jack wagons. I didn't know you were going to put me on the spot for the Perf- jack wagons. Perfectly forgivable. Okay. <laughs> Nice recovery, Mav. All right. All right. Finish strong. Right? Finish strong. That's right. So uh, there you go. That does it for the uh, Facts to Fight the Myth. Cool. Uh, and again, Leadheads, if you've got questions uh, for Eric, 
Uh, anything to do with the prepping, the the long term term storage? Survive. What would you call this? Emergency food, long term storage. Uh, how do you? Is there a category for this that just captures all those, or do you got to say all those every time to? It's, so people. It's will... interesting. I, I like to say survival food because number one, it's in our name, right? Survive. Sure. Uh, new survival, and so I say survival food and. I, you know, I think of it as, as two things. We save lives. And so that, that fits to survival food, both in terms of get you through that short term or long term or that eventuality that we've been talking about. And also, you know, we save lives because our food uh, does something for you. You know, it improves the quality of your life and you don't have to wait for a, a bad thing to happen to start eating it. You know, I, like I said, I eat it every day and, yeah. it, and it's and, you know, it's food. It's great food. And I feel better about doing it. Yeah. I want to get back to the chef that you've got in the basement. <laughs> don't, don't tell him. I would be down there every day while he's prepping stuff and, uh, you know, yeah. tasting, trying it out. Have you tried bacon in that yet, Jeff? <laughs> so is it's, bacon coming? Is that, is that on the menu? Bacon. So our facility, we are not, um, what they call USDA and USDA is the governing body for, um, protein and, and meat products, meat. eggs, yeah. meat, and that sort of thing. So we are we are an FDA facility, and most people don't know the difference, um, nor should they. But because I've been in food manufacturing for a long, long time, you know it's an important distinction. So we don't have meat products in our food. The eggs, gotcha. is, the way that we use the eggs is uh, FDA. Um, cheese is FDA, dairy products FDA, and that sort of thing. So we're we're in the clear on all that, but we can't introduce um, meat products. But on the on the on the similar vein, you know, we're really proud that we've got all the proteins and things that people go to meat for. Mm-hmm. And people, let's face it, people their their expectation for their protein source is changing. It's not just meat, animal meat anymore. It's it's nuts, it's plant protein. You know, think about all the. Possible burgers, Beyond Burgers, that stuff just continue to grow because it's a great source for protein. Good point. Now, with the to get the USDA certification, I'm sure there's a lot more licensing and scrutiny that goes into, I guess, getting certified for that. Is that something maybe you guys might be looking at to do in the future? Yeah, I mean, the, the, and I, I came from Purdue Chicken, so I, I was six years at Purdue. Uh, as their chief marketing officer, so I know a lot about USDA. And the reason the USDA is there is to make sure that our food supply is safe, right? Sure. And, and meat has a tendency to introduce all kinds of very bad things that yeah. will kill us. It I remember kill- not too long ago, there was uh, something with the beef or something that was coming in, and they yep. had to shut down the... That's right. E. coli... Um, salmonella in you know in poultry products, E. coli in, in beef products, that sort of thing. Um, you know, you, met, you hear about mad cow disease and stuff mm. like that from time to time. But it's a really, really important part of our food, our food chain that needs to be carefully watched. Um, the things that we're using are 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 very low risk, and we test we test uh, every batch that comes out. We send away for. Um, uh, safety and microbiology readings on everything. We make sure everything is is 100% safe for everybody that eats our stuff. Very nice. Very nice. Yeah. yeah. All right. So uh, you, Eric, this is your first time on the Talking Lead podcast. And we have this, yeah. this series of questions uh, that we ask new guests. And we call it the New guy, new guy, new guy. New guy, new guy, new guy. New guy. Questions. Questions. So the first question is, uh, what is your earliest recollection of being exposed to a firearm or a gun? Um, well, I've had guns around a long, long time. I grew up with guns. And uh, so... And it's almost like ask me when I ask Jesus into my heart type of question. Like, oh man, like I, I ask probably like a hundred times a year, Jesus, can you come into my heart? I want to go to, make sure I go to heaven, okay? Sure. And I don't, and I don't think any any uh, you know too much is will hurt. But anyway, so I you know I remember not including pellet guns and that sort of thing. The very first gun I would say that I remember because it was such an impact. I was twelve, and 
we my grandpa had a 3030 um winchester lever action sweet uh model what 95 i think mm -hmm. model 95 lever action and uh and then he gave that to my dad and then when i was 12 my dad gave it to me nice. and uh I guess I failed because I didn't give it to my son yet, and he's he's. <laughs> but I grew up on the East Coast where there's no ranges anywhere. Okay, so that's a problem. But I I remember. No, you just don't want to give it to him because you like it so much. <laughs> probably I do love that gun. It's a great gun. It's light. It's just awesome gun, right? It's such a it's such a great gun. Mm -hmm. uh, anyway, I remember firing that thing and taking a kick, and uh, so that was probably my earliest memory um, shooting a firearm. And where'd you um, grow up? I grew up out in Washington State. Washington State, okay. Yeah, yeah, it's it's great out there. Great uh, wilderness yeah. area out there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I grew up on the peninsula, so you, to fire a fire a, a gun, you just drive up on the mountain on the other side and throw some targets out and go to town on you know yeah. with a with a mountain. Yeah. That's back in the good old days. Back in the good old days, up here in Nevada, same thing though. It's eighty percent. Bureau of Land Management, mm -hmm. and so, you know you just got to make sure open. you're, yeah, make sure you're out of um, sight. You can just pull um, over the side of the road there and shoot guns. I've heard people that do that, do target yeah, practice yep. and stuff. Um, yep, sure, cool. for sure. And you still have it, so that's awesome. Um, yeah. So ammunition's a little tough to come by. Well, uh, yeah, we are in that uh, that state right now with coming off of the COVID pandemic and the. The panic from that and then of course the new administration uh, but again that goes into that prepping thing if you if you're prepping after the situation happens you you're too late you know so sure. you need to start now even even though ammo and you know these things are hard to come by right now if you get an opportunity to go out you need to go out and you know, get what you can and start now that's it that's it a little bit at a time definitely was that an alarm telling you that your time's up what was that what did we hear um, I have 5% left. I may have to ask for a break to uh, go get a plug or something, but I've got 5% on my, my okay. computer. All right. Let's, but, we don't want you to run out of, uh, of battery. So next question, <laughs> he just, he goes, he goes, I answer your questions for you. Uh, it's over military law enforcement background, which you alluded to that you, you do have a military background. Talk about that um, a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I, I I uh, was really really lucky. Um, had done well enough in school and everything to uh, get an appointment to West Point. So I went I went to West Point and graduated in '91. So I might be older than you. I don't know. You said you were 50. I'm older than 50. But yeah, you're definitely older than me if you're older than 50. <laughs> All right, I am. I am. Yeah. And uh, served in the in the army for seven years. I you know I I thought uh, what I wanted to do for my first assignment was do something fun. And I heard that Panama had uh, sandy beaches and palm trees and cheap beer and beautiful women. So they I said, sold Sign you. Up. <laughs> that's where I want to go. And I went there and I, I met, I got all those things and I came home with a beautiful bride, been married now 28 years to her. Oh, and she's a naturalized citizen now. So that was probably wishes, the best. Man. Nice. One of the best things that came out of the military uh, for me was finding my, my beautiful wife. Now, is she the chef in the basement you're talking about? <laughs> at home she 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 does make a, a pretty good dish from time to time yeah so you said yeah yeah um what about uh deployments um yeah during your time yeah yeah so it's interesting so the period 91 um was president clinton and there were a lot of deployments to odd spots you know actually we had just finished um uh, the the Iran I'm sorry the Iraq War Gulf War one that started in August and we all thought we were going August of ninety we all thought we were going overseas to go fight that war and so everything we were learning at West Point was about Iraqi tactics remember the Republican Guard and all that stuff okay so that was we were learning how they built their defensive systems and how we we're going to breach them and it was it was pretty intense and then. Schwarzkopf came in and basically ended it in a hundred hours, right? Yeah. And it's like, well, I guess we're not going over there, at least not all of us. Uh, so again, I, I was able to take a, a tour, went to Panama and did that. And the closest thing that I came to down there was some riots, you know, civil civil disturbances. And we had a couple of guys that got killed due to um, harassment and, and terrorist type activity. 
Um, but that's kind of the closest thing that I ever had to be a part of. Um, when, I, when I came back to the States, I went to Fort Sill for a bit and then off to Fort Campbell, Kentucky, where I was with the 101st Airborne. I, I did the Ranger stuff, Airborne stuff, Air Assault stuff, up all that. Up here in my neck of the woods in Clarksville. Yeah, I love it up there. I love it. I, it's beautiful country. A beautiful country. I used to live in Clarksville. Yep. And um, so part of the 101st was rapid deployment. And so a lot of training for that, but I never actually had to jump on a plane and go to a destination unknown right. uh, as far as that goes. So I lucked out, but a lot of my a lot of my friends and folks that have been in that uh, service for a long time, obviously, have spent a lot of tours overseas: Iraq, Afghanistan, you know, Bosnia, ev- everywhere, right? And uh, that's just what we do. We 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 protect and we defend our values, and that's that's a, that's a big part of uh, being an American. Yeah. So how do you, you said you had a um, a career in the food service industry? How did your military career lead to that? <laughs> that's kind of i'm like you i love to eat okay and, um and i started out at procter and gamble when i got out of the service procter and gamble at the time had a food portfolio and so i started on folgers coffee and then jiff peanut butter and that's why i love peanut butter and then i i spent a little more time at campbell soup company for about a dozen years and worked on their their canned business condensed and chunky and pego uh, pasta sauce, paste salsa, V8 chunky juice. Chunky soup was my jam growing up. I love the chunky it's soup. Yeah. Soup that eats like a meal, you know, fills you up right. <laughs> That's what got me hooked. That's it. Fills you up right. I mean, I don't so, like my stuff soup. I like soup. When I'm eating soup, I want soup. But when it's not supposed to be a soup, I don't like it soupy. Like, I don't like noodles soupy. You know, I, yeah. don't, I don't like my yeah. mac and cheese soupy. Yeah, uh, you yeah, know, kind of stuff. Well, that's that's the great thing about condensed soup. You can customize how much broth you want to put in there. Right. Yeah. Less water than the the better. Uh, you Absolutely. know, kind of flavor. Yeah. So, and then I finished that out at at Purdue, but is uh, Purdue Farms and the chicken business for Where six years. Where are they out of Purdue? They're out of Maryland. Yeah. Because okay. we got a lot of the Tyson stuff down here in Tennessee. Yep. The, the yep. Tyson They're, chicken. Is the number one fresh chicken company in the U.S. Oh, okay. They've got to sell more fresh chicken than anybody else, more than Tyson, more than Sanderson, more than any of these guys. And that was our claim to fame. Tyson does a really good job of what we call further process. So the stuff that's in the freezer, the nuggets, and that sort of thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that's where most of their money is made. Yeah. So I, I love food, and it's I've had a very you know good run as a, a general manager food marketer type over the years. And this, again, this was just sort of a natural uh, segue into hopefully the, you know, one of the last jobs I ever have, if not the last one. So did you go go from Purdue to this? Yes, I did. Okay. So, yep. you, you, so just uh, last year? Just recently. Yep. Just recently. So started here in June. And you're in Nevada now. I'm in Reno, Reno, Nevada. I used to say Reno, and people are like, oh, that's, that's all right. But then we say Reno, Tahoe. And like, oh, Tahoe, you're next to Tahoe. Yeah, I'm, I'm right up by Tahoe. So it's beautiful out here. A lot of beautiful uh, scenery and places to go hike. And, yeah, and- I've been out there. I like Lake, Lake Tahoe. I've been to Lake Tahoe. It's absolutely gorgeous out there. It's amazing. You can't believe that it's a lake in the middle of the mountains like that. Yeah. It's just, it's just, it's like a lake. It's so massive. Yeah, it's just, just desolation and then come over the hill and boom, there's this That's it. ginormous body of water. <laughs> That's it. It's beautiful. So the next question is, uh, when it comes to pop culture, what is your go-to for like relaxation or just escapism, whether it's a movie, a TV, a book, uh, you know, whatever it may be, a podcast? <laughs> oh, yeah, podcast. Now I'm talking lead. There you go. Pod- yeah. It's on my list for sure. Well, I, I like, uh, I like you know, I do like to watch – television being a marketer i like to see ads and things like that most people try to zip through the ads i actually like to watch them but i like um i like drug related stories you know be it scarface even narcos ah. i like have you seen the, that series narcos it's excellent yeah, yeah I, I i did I, I really liked that i thought they were bringing it back but i guess they're they've wrapped it up well i think there are three seasons but when i was in panama Pablo Escobar was, he was, he was, he was a real deal still. And I actually did my honeymoon down in Colombia, and I had, I was just totally clueless, I guess, because Pablo was running all over the place Uh and 
I was there, you know, having my honeymoon. You probably passed uh, him. <laughs> yeah, we, we must have flown right past each other. So he's like, a lot Eric. Of, yeah, right. He's like, Eric, you mission, didn't even wave at me. <laughs> we, we did a lot of uh, counter narcotic type missions. So I've just been a little infatuated with that. Noriega, the dictator in Panama, mm -hmm. he got taken out a couple of years before I showed up down there. Still, all the buildings were shot up with bullets and, and that sort of thing and still living through some of that. So he was, um, he was a big drug dealer too, you know? Oh yeah. So huge. Yeah. But I, I like that sort of storyline. I, you know, I like action stuff. I like UFC. So I do a lot of weird stuff like that. You know, you like watching UFC. Culture. I like, I like watching UFC too. Oh yeah. UFC is great. Yeah. I love it. Especially the old stuff. Andy, uh, Randy Couture, Matt Hughes, Rich Franklin, you know, Oh yeah, I liked um, uh, what was it, the Tito Ortiz back in back in the Tito Ortiz Tito. days. He was good. Chuck Liddell, Tito, yeah. Chuck Liddell, yeah. Uh, he's uh, he's he's still around. Chuck Liddell. I mean, he's not fighting anymore, but uh, he's doing more yeah, Hollywood type stuff. Him like him and Randy Couture. That's uh, it. Been That's in a it. lot of movies. Randy Couture. I actually uh, have met those guys. Oh really? Uh, I've had Randy's girlfriend on the show. Um, her, her name's Mindy. She goes by oh. iHeart Mindy on uh, the social meds. Um, very, uh, really? very nice. Very proactive conservative. Uh, really, great. Yeah, I've I've seen Randy fight in person, and I've seen Chuck. I've seen Anderson Silva. I've been at probably five or six uh, fights. Um, I've had Hoist now, Gracie on the show. Hoist has been on the show. Oh, cool. Yeah, awesome. Yeah. yeah. Like I said, I've diversity. Never... We like diversity on this show, man. Yeah, no doubt. No doubt. No doubt. That's cool. He's the, the, the godfather, the original, you know? Oh, yeah. Absolutely. His family, yeah. you know, the whole Gracie family. Um, so movie-wise, what's, what's like your all-time favorite movie? Oh, all-time favorite? Yeah. Well, you talked about Charleston Heston already. Um, Planet of the Apes is my all-time favorite oh, and nice. it, uh, as a kid uh that was the one that i think had the most profound impact on me yes because, i would agree know? with uh, me yeah. too yeah as yeah far really as, as far yeah as far because i always wanted to be an astronaut um yeah growing up okay. you know space travel that's why i guess i got into aviation mm -hmm. um so you know he was an astronaut they were astronauts and were? they land on this strange you know they planet uh right and then of course you know just the the fantasy about the apes you know like humans coming to life and so it had cool. it had guns in it it had horses it had uh you know yeah. everything so yeah it was it's one Great of my acting. all time and i got the toys you know remember they came out with the toys Are you kidding had the had the planet of the ape toy. i had two older brothers too which which was good um, yeah so yeah. Uh, you know i got yeah. I got their hand-me-downs. <laughs> right, right. I still, I went home, gosh, probably six months ago and checked out all my old stuff, still stuffed in the closet, you know, and they're, they're all my apes. I planted the apes. And, oh, you still you know, have them? I still have them. That's, now they're not in the, they're not in the boxes sure. with the nice cards. But, you know, I've got rubber bands holding their arms together, <laughs> you know, through the body. Remember that? Oh, yeah, yeah. And, yeah. Just all Jerry rigged just to keep them together, keep, you know, because I played them with them so much. That was like my GI Joes, you know, when they came out with the the three and a half inch GI Joes. They had those oh, rubber yeah. bands that held them together at the waist. That's it. I became I became a re-engineered GI Joe uh, expert. So I would take the screw out of their back, take them apart, put a new rubber band in there, and then That's I figured it. out you could interchange their body parts. <laughs> So, exactly. Exactly. So yeah. I would customize and make my own GI Joe figures. Yeah. Well, I had uh, this is a long, this is a stupid story, but some of my um, some of my apes had fallen apart. But then I also had the same uh, same company. I think it was Hasbro uh -huh. or Mattel. Mego. Mego. That's yeah. it. Mego. Yeah. They came out with like uh justice league so batman Super Robin, heroes J yeah Super heroes. and so i remember taking apart my joker okay uh -huh. and the joker had white hands mm -hmm. yeah I, I used his arms on cornelius 
<laughs> so nice. Amelia Snow had like white hands with gloves. Good gloves, yeah. Anyway, just that funny was... stuff. Just because you, you had to, you had to, you know, you had to. I would take uh, the the heads off. I would. I could. You could like pinch the heads, and then pull the heads off, and you could <laughs> interchange heads. So I would take you know Batman's head off and put him on Superman's body. So Batman was. You know, and I had the powers of Superman. There you go. Well, that's, okay. I didn't transfer powers. I just transferred the bodies, the parts. Okay. Yeah, I would, that's how I would. It was like, all right, yeah. Batman now is super. You know, has the power of Superman because I was like, why does not Batman strong? I want Batman to be strong. The imagination so, of kids, you know. Hey, you got to do what you got to do. This is back before you could buy this stuff off Amazon and everything was disposable. No, you know? I would order mine out of the back of the comic book. So the Marvel characters, so Iron Man and Thor, and you know, I had all those, all those. Right, yes. right. So is Planet of the Apes legitimately, that's your favorite movie too, or no? It's one of my favorite movies, yes. Okay. Yes, okay. I okay. could sit down and watch Planet of the Apes, the original Planet of the Apes, right. over and over and over again. Now, some of the, the sequels were a little cheesy. Uh, right not not as good as the original but the original is uh yeah it's my jam i love it yeah oh cool that's cool yeah oh yeah and star wars is probably next on the list as far as impact on my life you yeah. know because i went into the theater this is again back before you get stuff off dvds and mm-hmm. you know streaming and all that you had to work to go see a movie oh yeah it was, the- and it was a remember- treat it was like a it was a treat to be able to go to a theater it really was. It really was. But that was an awesome movie. Just such an amazing, amazing show. So yeah, there was nothing like it that existed at the time. You know, with the special effects and uh, you know just the concept of the story that uh, right. that he was putting together. Um, I mean, it's a tried and true story told over and over and over again. But the way that he told it, you know, Lucas told it was at the time just groundbreaking. You know, groundbreaking. Oh, it, it was cool. Revolutionary. It was cool. <laughs> it was cool. Yeah. Yeah. Now today, you know, I like the John Wick movies. Uh, digging, digging the John Wick movies. Do you? And I like the format that they've come out with. And I know this isn't talking movies, uh, but you know, like I said, we chase squirrels here. Um, yeah. The the long TV series now, you know, like like they're doing on the the Disney Plus and the HBO Max and the the Netflix. You know, where you got it's like a long, you know, movie where you get sure, you know. Instead of a two-hour movie, you get a a ten-hour, you know, series right. kind of thing. I, I liked that format of things too. So, yeah, yeah, we we just watched. Um, well, we're watching right now Falcon and the Falcon the Winter Soldier, and Soldier, which is pretty good. Yeah, I'm and, watching that too. Yeah, that last episode. I don't know if you saw it or not, mm-hmm. but I, I don't want to spoil it for anybody. That was that was pretty. That was a good ending to that particular uh, episode. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I think they only got like two more. Of that. I think it's either six or eight. I can't remember how many they're going to have. Yeah, uh, but the you know, Wandavision was good. I liked Wandavision. The, Took a while for that one to develop, didn't it? If it, it started off slow, yeah, but you know, I could see where they were going. But they, it's kind of how they started with this one too. This one started off, but it picked up quicker than right uh, than Wandavision did. But yeah, I, I like the way that they're doing those type of formats. I don't know what they cut. They're not movies. They're not TV, but they're categorized as TV, I guess. Right, right. Yeah, I guess if it's stuff. not played on the big screen, then it's TV. Right. Streaming. We'll call it streaming. Streaming. I mean, way back when, you think about it, uh, what was the series? Roots it was uh, probably the yeah. closest thing, right? Where it was just. Those were made for TV movies. Yes, exactly. Kind exactly. V. Remember V? I do. About the the oh, alien. And, yeah. Of course. The alien invasion? That was that was one of those too. I mean, we're showing our age now. So <laughs> I had nightmares about that show for a long time. Oh, the Twilight Zone was my favorite. They, they used to give me nightmares. The Twilight Zone. I wasn't allowed to watch it, so there I, I you know therefore I wanted to watch it, and I would sneak it. That's it. Our next question is: When it? Um, what is your next? Like, gotta have, wanna have? You know, this is. You know, when I get the opportunity or when it's available, I'm going to go out and I'm going to buy this. Luxury item, you know, just kind of Luxury disposable item. income. You know, this is what I want to go get. You know, I got to gotta have this. It could be a truck, could be a kit, gear. Uh, Who knows? What well, be. I'll tell you what's, what's on my list right now, and I don't have the money to uh, run out and grab it, and it's not available. 
but yeah. I'm on the list. I'm on I'm on the list for a, a Tesla Cybertruck. There you go. Yeah. So something like that. So a Tesla Cybertruck. That's right. I'm on the list. What appeals to you about the Tesla Cybertruck? And just there's so much that appeals. There's so much. <laughs> <laughs> So number one, I, I do I do drive a Tesla. Okay, I have a Tesla, and I love it. It's so fast, and it is just instant speed and acceleration. The torque is just awesome. Yeah. It's unbelievable. So it's it's like a go kart. Literally, you push your put you put your put put your foot on the pedal, and you're gone. And you're goes. just gone. <laughs> so you're off the off the stop lights. The first guy, you know, gone and your acceleration just down the road. It's amazing. And it's a sexy car. It's just, it's awesome. And it's so cool. Just having the one screen and not all this crap all over the place. Now you got to charge it. Okay. Sure. I don't, but I don't have a gas station anymore. That's kind of fun. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, you, you put the stuff in the garage. So I'm, I'm totally hooked on Tesla. I love Tesla. I think Elon Musk is awesome. He's crazy, but he's, he's brilliant and awesome. He's, so he's a genius. Cyber- the Cybertruck is Mad Max truck, right? And I had to trade my truck. Well, I got rid of my truck when I moved from Maryland. And so I did that knowing that I was on the list for Cybertruck because I need something to pull my other stuff, right? Be it a boat or camper or so this is what I want. I'm, I'm not buying another truck until this thing comes out. And oh, my gosh. I'm looking at it right now. I just Googled it. And- is it cool? It, it's Mad Max, it right? It looks like something that would would have been in the old Lost in Space series. Yeah, yeah, or or Terminator. You know that 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 truck that goes and crushes all the skulls. It's it's yeah. kind of that scene. And so apparently he's making this thing out of the same material that he makes spaceships. Okay. And the the glass uh, is supposedly you know bulletproof. Okay. And I'm sure there's going to be all kinds of cool little things that you can mount different uh, weapon systems, probably. But <laughs> it's super fast, you know, zero to 60 and whatever, 4.2 or whatever it is. It's just, it's going to, it is so cool and it's going to be so fast and just. I mean, is this right on the price? That's all they're going to cost? No way. That's it. Yeah. 39000 for a single motor. Dual motor so, is 50000 A tri motor is 70000 And you got to go. Here's my advice. Okay. You absolutely get the dual motor. I am going to get the triple motor because you, you get even more torque, more, more, you know, horsepower, more pulling, you know, capacity and all, all that. Wheel drive. Yeah. It's an all wheel drive. Okay. But you have to make sure if you get a Tesla, don't cheap out and get the single motor. You got to get the dual motor, and even these cars, you can get performance mode for another like ten thousand. And zero it gets you- to sixty in two point nine seconds. See what I'm saying? Fourteen thousand pound towing capacity. There you go. What else do you need? I mean, I can't wait. And you can you can reserve one for a hundred dollars down right now. I I put my name on the list the first day he announced. <laughs> it, I got my name on the list. Oh my gosh. So I, I think can't it's wait. ugly as hell. Um, <laughs> it grows. Okay. It it's, grows just a, on. it's just a, that's, that shape has a name. I can't remember what the geometric shape for that is. Like a rhombus or something. I don't know. Something like that. Do you remember the, the Pontiac Aztec? Yes. Yes. That is what it reminds me of. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. And I hated those. <laughs> I hated the Aztecs. That was such a bad idea. Oh, it was. It was. Why did they do that? But this this looks like something that you would get in your Lego kit, and you could you could keep adding to it. You know what I mean? You could keep building onto it. So maybe that's the purpose that he's got for this. Well, you'll have you'll have to go out on YouTube and and check out some of his videos because there are a couple prototypes out there. Okay. Okay. They're not cool. available yet. You know, I don't think he's gone into any sort of production yet. Nobody will tell you anything about that. But I'm really excited about getting my Cybertruck. So there's no due date like coming out in the next year, two years or anything like that? They- well, I think before COVID, it was supposed to be 2021. But now I think because of COVID, it's probably slowed down a little. Yeah. Yeah. Very cool. I mean, that's that's cool. Yeah. That's- it's affordable, too. It- and it's affordable. It is affordable. Plus, you know, you're saving the planet, man. You know? Ah, who cares? <laughs> As long as I got my uh, my nutrient survival, you know, the planet can go to hell. 
<laughs> I, I bought my Tesla for the speed and because it's really sexy. There you go. I guess you could probably lift that too, put it on a lift kit, put some bigger bigger wheels on there. You really I'm, monster truck it up. I don't know. That's cool. It's already pretty. All right, so we're going to go to the next realm on this question. So laws be damned, money be damned. What would you own? What would I own yeah. outside of my yeah. cyber truck? Yeah, this this is something that you know it's affordable. It's you know this is obtainable. This okay. is this is sky's the limit. Laws don't apply. Money doesn't apply. Okay, so I think the thing that comes to mind for me, I'm in a I'm an artilleryman. I was a fi fire support officer, but a trained artilleryman, and so I think I would probably get um, like a howitzer. Probably a 105 millimeter howitzer, something I can tow with my cyber truck. Okay, there you go. Uh, <laughs> That's cool. And stick it, you know, stick it wherever I want to stick it, and and shoot artillery rounds into the mountains or something. That would be pretty cool because you know. No, Why no, not, not just have one mounted on your your cyber could, truck, and then you can fire it from the cabin. Yeah, and you got a tank. Yeah, <laughs> you know that's what tanks they they have 105 millimeter main guns yeah it's just a it's just a portable driving howitzer yeah 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 but i, I think the howitzer that would be fun that'd be a lot of fun probably that what would be the first thing that you would blow up with it oh man because i mean you gotta you gotta have a target you gotta shoot something what, what would you well want? i think the first thing i would do is i would i would probably put blanks in it of some sort and just do like a fourth of july you know, eighteen twelve overture type thing. Oh, that's cool. That'd be, yeah, that'd be pretty fun. And wake up the neighbors, right? <laughs> From two miles <laughs> away, right? The first thing to blow up. You know, they mounted. They put a hundred five millimeter howitzers in the AC one thirty Spectre gunships. That's what they were shooting out of those things. Okay. I don't know if you knew that or not, but uh, oh, I knew they had so, some big guns. I didn't know exactly which round they were shooting out. Yeah. No one hundred fives, but they were using a howitzer. Round. Basically, it's your cannon, direct fire, you know, down. And I know that because that's what they used in Panama. Um, but that's what they're mounted in, in Spectre gunships. Nice. So, yeah, I don't know. I'd, I'd, I'd probably just take aim at junk cars sitting on a mountain somewhere. There you go. I don't know. Yeah. Um, next question is if – no, let's do this one. So is there – uh, maybe something that you own, and I, I don't think you'd probably be ashamed of anything. You just admitted that you still have your, um, your Planet <laughs> of the Apes dolls. You know, that's what they were always called when I was growing up. Dolls. Figures. They're action figures. Uh, Damn it. Figure. Action yeah, figures. Dolls. Um, something that you own that maybe you're a little maybe embarrassed to admit that you own or have. Wow, I don't think it goes any lower than action figures. Um, <laughs> I can tell you that, you know, to this day, um, for for Christmas, for my birthday, I get Planet of the Apes stuff. Still, and so you're that still, big of a Planet of the Apes fan? Okay. From my family, they they are just. What do we get, Eric? I don't know. He likes Planet of the Apes, so I still get you know Planet of the Ape things. And now they're making these new movies, and yeah, so kinds of merchandise out there of course it's it's not worth anything but i feel obligated to to hang on to it and put it in a box somewhere you know so it's probably that planet of the ape collection that's sitting out there i have my star wars figures too by the way got your original ones i got my original ones from the, the first movie oh, yeah nice so yeah i got really but, huge into the the gi joe the three and three quarters right. gi joes um really you know really liked them when i was younger growing up and I didn't really have that many. I mean, I had a pretty good um, set. But I didn't realize the, the expanse of the G.I. Joe, how big it really was. Because, you know, I live in a small, real rural town growing up. Um, and, you know, they had an aircraft carrier, seven-foot-long aircraft carrier. That really? You, that you could land your Stryker F-14 on. And they had all wow. the, They had a huge... Um, crawler space station that launched a space shuttle. Uh, you know they had all these huge little play sets and you know different things that as growing up I didn't didn't realize they had. And when I was in my twenties, when I graduated college and you know was getting getting a little disposable income, I was like, man, 
I didn't know anything yeah. about that. So I just went crazy and oh, ended up with like one of the largest GI Joe collections in the Seriously? Southeast. Oh yeah. I mean, I had thousands wow. of figures and vehicles and, and you know, all that stuff. And I, you know, I got into the foreign stuff too. So I was like, Oh, they made these in India. They made them in China. They made them in, you know, yeah. port, in Costa Rica. You know, I was yeah. like, I gotta yeah. have those. Right. eBay probably just came on the horizon too. Yes. eBay was a, is one of my downfalls. Yeah. At the times <laughs> I would yeah. buy, I would just buy massive collections just to get like one piece out of, you know, a collection that I saw on eBay. But, um, yeah. So, uh, I really, and I traded yeah. all my star Wars, you know, oh. figures. I had all the star Wars and I had all my mega superhero. Fi- I traded everything for GI Joe's. I mean, I just went crazy. Yeah. How about that? For G.I. Joe's. And then I sold it um, when I was in my 30s, I guess. Okay. Some Sometime around in my 30s, I, I ended up was like, all right, enough's enough. <laughs> this is. I got I to gotta put a car in this garage to get these boxes of G.I. Joe's, seven-foot seven, seven foot, uh, aircraft carrier out of the garage. Right. It's, it's The ladies aren't really attracted to my G.I. Joe collection anymore. So. <laughs> well, no, I'm impressed you, you got Mego down. I could I, – for the life of me, I, I would never, never been able to tell you what manufacturer that oh, was. Oh yeah, but. yeah, Mego man, they they were the kings of the action figures in the day. They, you know, they made the the comic book pages come to life with the How about with yeah. the Mego characters and just the fact that you could mail order those, you know, from the back of the the magazine. That was the thing too. You know, we didn't have the internet or uh, right. No, like, of course I guess you, not. You could phone order, but. Uh, it was you. You would mail in, tell them what you wanted, check a box, whatever, send a check, right through the mail, and I mean, this was the day in the days where, you know, you said I want to buy it, and they would send you what you, you know, what you what you ordered. Right. Include and your shipping and handling. Include yeah, two fifty or whatever it was, you know, for your shipping and handling. It covers you know covers everything, and then like three weeks later or something, you know, you go check the mail every day. You know, oh, oh, yeah. Waiting for your, your figures to come out. I remember this one time we had, me and my brothers had ordered like two each. So we were expecting a big order of, of our superhero figures to come in. And, you know, like three weeks went by, four weeks went by, five right. weeks went by. And we're like, oh, my gosh. They, you know, they, they hoodooed us. Who are you going to call? They, they hoodooed us, you know, so... Uh, I think there was a number. I can't remember exactly what it was. Maybe our 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 mom and you know, our parents called, and you know they're like, "Well, we shipped it. You know, it it should be there." So we had this neighbor kid, uh, next door neighbor kid, and, no, and he invited us over to his house one day to play. And this has been you know, like a couple of months after we just wrote it off, like we're never going to get these, and we got to save up our allowances again for another you know six months, and you know that kind of thing, and. Uh, we went over there and we noticed, you know, hey, he's got all the figures that we ordered, and we confronted him, and that that little bastard stole them out of our mailbox. Unbelievable! <laughs> wow. Yeah. Yeah. So even back in the day, I mean, you still had the porch thieves. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's that's horrible. Yeah. That's horrible. Oh, tell you, uh, trust me, he got a beating. <laughs> Yeah, between, two of them, two on one. Between the three of us, yeah, my, me and my two older brothers, yeah, he took a beating. But okay, okay. But yeah. we got we got our figures back. <laughs> Good for you. And his parents were like, "Yeah, he deserved it." You know, yeah, that was back in the day where. How could they not know where did they, these things just showed up? He had I mean, them they're... hidden. He he had them hidden in his closet. Okay. And he just I, I don't know how we we were kind of suspecting him anyway from the beginning. <laughs> so, so we kind of mm. devised a plan where he, you know, we went and we got, you know, he invited us over and read his house and one of us went in there and they're like, yep, busted. Yeah. 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 <laughs> got it. Now we're, we're going to a little payback here. Yeah, absolutely. Sure. Absolutely. But you know, those were the good old days. Good old days. Cool. So, uh, last question is if, um, you could pick anybody or any group of people that you would like to spend the day at the range with. They could be dead. They could be living. It could be a fictional character or group of people. It could be a mix of all the above. Who would you like to spend the day at the range with? Day at the range. Ooh. 
Or it could just be spend the day with, you know. Mm. Since this is a firearms related show, we <laughs> I will stick I'll stick with Day at the Range. I think that'd be Yeah. I think uh there's probably I, I like Charleston Heston. I think that'd be that'd be a lot of fun. Yeah. Now uh, would you want Charlton Heston or would you want um Taylor, his character from Planet of the Apes? <laughs> I think Charlton Heston. Okay. I'd want him to be raw raw charlton there right? you go nice uh, that that'd be one probably i would love i think i'd love to spend some time with um you know john wick is interesting as a character mm -hmm. you know that guy's pretty pretty handy you know sean ryan he's this guy that's got vigilance elite he's down in franklin franklin tennessee just, just yeah right next to you okay is that a train and training he, company he is a former Navy SEAL, CIA contractor guy, and his, his deal is Vigilance Elite. He actually was in Hollywood a bit training uh, Keanu Reeves for his John Wick shows. Okay. Very nice. You believe that? We've had a so, couple of people that uh, – so uh, Taryn Butler, who um, Keanu worked with on his firearms handling and manipulation with the, the pistols and whatnot, we've had him yeah. on. Uh, yeah. And we had um, uh, Keith Garcia, you know, in this the most recent one. You know, he had a lot of shotgun uh, maneuvers and ma manipulations. Worked with him on his shotgun training. Right. So we've had them on, and then uh, the company that supplies the guns to the movies. Um, uh, we just had them on, like well, they actually represent Leviathan, Leviathan Group. Oh yeah, that's sure. That's how you and I got uh, hooked up. That's right. Through, that's right. Through Chris at Leviathan. Well, I, I would invite John Wick, but he would have to bring all his guns, and we would then shoot all those guns. Yeah, all kind his of, cool you know, weapons. The deal for sure. And I, uh, for some reason, same thing on Heston. I remember him. Uh, he's got a very iconic uh, picture with. I think it's a Winchester. Mm -hmm. uh, well, he was president of the NRA, you know, for the longest. Yeah. yeah so he'd have to bring his gun collection too. You know what? You can you, and wasn't he the one that coined? You can take take this this gun from my cold, cold you know, private hands. hands. Didn't he coin that? I don't know if that was him or not, but you know he did in the Planet of the Apes. Uh, you know, you get your yeah. stinking dirty paws. <laughs> you damn dirty, you apes. damn dirty yeah. apes. <laughs> That's right. That's right. That's right. Uh, so. But I don't know if he coined the "you can have my gun when you pry it from my cold dead hands." Was that him that said that? Let's see. I'm sure he's delivered it. He must have delivered that. When you pry, that's what the internet's for. Yeah, no doubt. I don't have a um, you know computer technician like Joe Rogan that can look this stuff up while we're talking. So I'm I'm low rent. I got to do it myself. That's it. I'm just watching you do it, so I'm not helping. <laughs> but I did. Well, find your battery's out a almost dead. So AOC, her group is called the the, uh, the Squad. The Squad. That's what it is. Yeah. Here it is. I'll give you my gun when you pry or take it from my cold dead hands. Is a slogan popularized by the NRA on a series of bumper stickers. Uh, it is a variation of a slogan mentioned in 1976. Uh, report from the Senate Judiciary Committee, Subcommittee, Juvenile Delinquency. I will give up my gun when they peel it from my uh, dead finger. I think it's actually the Moen Labe. Isn't that what Moen, Moen, Moen Labe means? So I think uh, Leonidas is actually the one who. Oh, That okay. means come and take it, you know. Sure. Come and take it. Sure. I think that is actually the, uh, now that I think right. about it. Um, yep. But anyway, there you go, so. Yeah. All right. Well, good to know. Well, I like I said, I'm sure he said it. If he was, you know, the president of the NRA, and it was adopted by the NRA. Yeah. You know? Anyway, yeah. I might go find that. Yeah, I think that is the basically the Latin translation of the the Moen Moenabe Moenabe. I don't know how to say. I'm not. I don't speak Latin. I took French. Come on. <laughs> Spanish. I'm a lover, not a fighter. No, I took fighter. Spanish so I could meet girls. Come on, in, <laughs> in Panama, and it worked. I, the I met language the one. of love, right? The one. I don't know something. Spanish language. Love. Something. Well, there you go, um, Eric. You you did it. You made it through the new guy questions. You knocked them out one by one. You did great. Um, you you passed the test, so you are now an official leadhead. 
All right. Well, I can feel it. Welcome can feel to it. the Lead Head Brigade, brother. Thank you. Appreciate it. Yeah, <laughs> so, I, feel, I feel like I've been baptized. There you go. You have been indoctrinated. All right. So for all the Lead Heads out there, again, give them your um, social media, your website, where they can go and try out this Nutrient Survival. Use that new Lead Head discount code to get 10% off and uh, keep up with the latest and greatest, these new flavors like lasagna that you're coming yeah, out with. It's coming. Yeah, you know, I, I, I looked at our assortment in, probably in, in about three months. We're probably going to have about 35 different items right now. We've probably be out 20, including some of the drinks and all that. We should have pushed so this off until, <laughs> until all that came innovation uh but you can go to nutrientsurvival.com nutrientsurvival.com and your your code is active and ready it is uh leadhead and you get 10 percent off your order very nice and you guys are on the the grams the instagram we are on the ig and the fb and instagram is you know nutrient survival i've got my little deal going on instagram too or I say a few things every now and then about nutrient survival, so that's that's been fun. Yeah, and um, Eric's is at ranger.ec underscore nutrient. Looks like dot survival. Uh, that's it. I think once you get the dot ec, it comes up automatically, and then guys can go start following Eric there. And yep. then um, uh, nutrient survival is at nutrient survival, and that's where they come up there, and you can keep up with them there too. Yeah, and, cool. And Facebook is the same. You can go to Facebook uh, yeah. and, and follow them there. But their website is where you want to go. You're going to use that discount code. And that is the www.nutrientsurvival.com, baby. That's right. That's right. That's right. We've got a lot of people here at the, at the company that are anxious and eager to serve your, 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 uh, your listeners, Marty. And uh, just really thrilled to be able to talk to you today, to, you know, share a little of our story and hear a little bit of yours. Well, we appreciate that. And uh, we'd like to get you back on as you guys are a new company. Uh, you're going to be uh, growing and improving and these new offerings that you've got. Uh, we're anxious to hear them here because this is the show for exclusives, Eric. So when you've got news to drop, uh, All right. get in touch with us now. We want to reward our lead heads. I think we got a couple of giveaways that we're going to do with uh, with you guys. Yeah. So for the ones that participated, like, like you leadheads know, to to win things here, you have to listen to the show. You have to participate. When we do post on Instagram, we do post on Facebook. The ones who participate win. You send me emails with jack wagon suggestions, guests for the show, that kind of stuff. Yep. Um, that is how you win prizes here. So we're going to go to our posts that we did on Facebook and Instagram. Are we doing two giveaways? What are we doing? We can do two giveaways of our very popular singles variety pack. Sweet. So you get, you get to taste exactly what you got sent. Uh, and five of our of our you know best selling varieties, three entrees, and then you get the chocolate grain crunch and the oatmeal. Hardy yeah. apple cinnamon yeah. oatmeal as part of that, along with those three entrees we talked about, the Southwest medley, the triple mac and cheese, and the homestyle scramble, my personal favorite. And we will send that to your, your home uh, of your winner. There you go. So what first. we're going to do is we're going to go to Facebook first under that post that I did, and we've got the comments there. So I'm going to let you peruse through there, and you, you pick the deserving winner on that one. Okay. Do I get to go right now? Let's see. Yeah. yeah. You come to your comments. I'm here now. Well, I'm going to have to go with the early bird gets the worm as a, as a principle. Okay. I like so, that. although the, I think nine hours ago. Okay. 19 hours ago looks to be the, the oldest. There's a couple of 18 hours ago, six hours, eight hours. Nathan well, I, Shepherd looks like he's got 19 hours. Okay, Nathan Shepard, and I think we touched on this one, and and you spent a little time talking about it as well. But let's let's uh, let's give Nathan Shepard that first variety kit. Very good. So Nathan, congratulations! You won one of the uh, survival sampler packs from Nutrient Survival. Shoot me an email, talking at gmail dot com, and uh, I'll forward that on to them, and they'll send that out to you. Yep. For now sure. let's go to the Grams. Okay. The to the eye. Yeah, I'm going to refresh it here. Okay. And you want to do the early bird on this one too? 
Yeah, let's do that, right? People jump in on your stuff sooner the better. What uh, do you think? Is that the principle? Uh, yeah, I think, I think uh, see, I posted it like 22 hours ago, and I'm seeing 221 hours. All right. Well, I like that first one, which is about our point of difference, which is what makes this product stand out. Okay. And I think that's a really important part of our story. So I, on two counts, I think Rayo Shields, congratulations. You're going home with a sampler pack. Very good. So Rayo Shields, and I think that's your real name as I'm hovering over this. Congratulations. Shoot me an email, talking about gmail.com with uh, your, your shipping information and put you in touch with Nutrient Survival, Eric over there, and they're going to hook you up. So yeah, very man. good. So for you people who, who didn't win, uh, you want to try this out. Like I said, he's giving you a great incentive, 10% off. Use the code LEADHEAD at their website, and uh, you guys can, can try it out. I've tried them. Uh, I like them. Otherwise, I wouldn't have them on the show. <laughs> uh, if you. this stuff was, was crap, I would not uh, be talking about it right now. But it's, uh, it's definitely uh, good stuff. So if you're looking for a good long-term food storage, uh, you're a camper, you're a hiker, uh, this is right up your alley. You're gonna you're gonna really like it, uh, and I would like to hear your feedbacks on it too. So if you do try it, you do go use that code. Uh, let me know. Give me some feedback on it, and uh, let's see if we're in sync on this. And when those new flavors come out, man, I can't wait to try those. Um, we'll let you know. Sound like we got some good variety coming out. Bet. Yeah. Awesome. So leadheads, go and uh, support those that make this show possible. Mission First Tactical at missionfirsttactical.com. Seal One. Seal One dot net. Nemo Arms, um, another discount code there we've got for you leadheads. They they extended it to you. TL10, you're going to get 10% off, and that's anything on their website. That includes their firearms. And I don't know if you're familiar with Nemo Arms or not, uh, Eric, but you should go check them out. They've got some, some really high-end, high-quality rifles, pistols, and their shotguns uh, nice. are heirloom quality. Very nice uh, shotguns awesome. that they've got there. Uh, our friends over at ASP USA have set up a code LED20 to get 20% off any of their lights or light accessory flashlights. They've got the dual fuel flashlights. Um, they got the new one out. It's called the Raptor. Uh, and I can't remember the, the lumens on this, but uh, I don't know if it's on there or not. But it's AshUSA.com, and it's really bright. You're going to get 10% off. Uh, like I said, any of their light products, and they're dual fuel. So for you, you survivalists, you campers out there, um, uh, you store up on the batteries, or you can use the uh, rechargeable batteries in these as well. And they just plug into your, like the normal Android adapter type plugs that go right in there, uh, and you can charge them. And the batteries come out too, so you can either charge it with the battery in it, or take the battery out and charge the batteries that way. Uh, very good uh, options there. Factory 47 for the Talking Lead AK Corner apparel t-shirts hoodies uh our mugs that we have we call them leddies eric our talking leddies uh, okay better than a yeti keeps your drink seconds colder than a than a yeti the talking leddy that's not been proven by the way so i'm just it's a big flame yeah <laughs> uh they've got the uh, ak corner logo on those two different sizes uh, and then our shirts for men and women get the uh, ak corner logo on the front and then cool um, AK factories from around the world their logos are on the back of those on the hoodies and the t-shirts it's F-A-K-T-O-R-Y 47.com Leadhead get you 10% off there man we, we did a Rogan podcast today we're like three hours into this man were you prepared for that? <laughs> did, no did the man. nutrient survival get you the energy to get through my interview? <laughs> yeah thank god um, did no, you have a good I time? I had a great time. Thank you for having me. Um, I think my team is like, where's Eric been? You know, and so I'm working, went, man. I'm working. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Working, working for you guys. So there you be go. thankful. I, I appreciate it. You're a lot of fun and well, had I appreciate a lot of that. Nice talking to you. Hey, I, we, I could talk with you for uh, three more hours. Uh, so that gives more reason to have you back on. So right. like I said, you guys are welcome back anytime. When you get more product, uh, more varieties, let me know. We'll get on. We'll talk about them push them out to the lead heads but until then lead heads as always keep your loved ones close and your firearms closer and your nutrient survival in your belly because it's going to keep you healthy wealthy and energized i love it 
That's awesome. You're <laughs> a brand new spokesperson. You're so good. 